confident. He has leadership qualities. He's got a great sense for the game of football, and he's got great poise. Anything he tries to attempt is with just a great passion to win. They're talking about Mike Shula, Alabama's senior quarterback, a prime example of an individual using factors beyond athletic ability to be a winner. Today, with a touchdown pass, Mike Shula will become Alabama's career leader in touchdown passes. It may not come easy, however, because today, undefeated second-ranked Alabama plays old rival Tennessee. This one of college football's richest series, rich in tradition and history. Six break and auto white spark plug. You can pay a little now or a lot later. And by Radio Shack, the computer expert. It has been the date for the Alabama Tennessee game, and it's become one of the great collegiate series of all time. Here's what today's coaches have to say about it. Over the years, I think uh, Coach Bryant, I don't think he ever came out and said it when we were playing Tennessee, but I think he uses our Tennessee game every year as a measuring point for just how good a football team we really were. And I think this year, uh, I've told our players that I really think that this game today will be that type of game. It'll tell us a lot about our football team, just how good we are, and we should use it as a measuring point. I've never seen a, a football player who wore the orange shirt of Tennessee who really didn't play up to their best against Alabama. I think that's a measuring stick for an individual and a team, how well you play against Alabama, because it's uh, close to midseason. It's a great rivalry. Uh, there's none better, in my opinion. There are many who come to their games in Knoxville in the most enjoyable way. Let's join Mike Adamley for that story. Keith, you've heard of tailgate parties. Well, for years, Tennessee football fans have perfected the art of Watergate parties. But the only thing that's covered up are the banks of the Tennessee River, obscured by a flotilla of fanatical zealots that call themselves the Volunteer Navy. They start their game day with the morning newspaper and a cup of coffee, and by nightfall, they're whooping it up. The only requirement to join this Navy is a love for volunteer football and a willingness to party. Permission to come aboard? Hey, good morning. Good morning. This is a, a terrific, terrific idea. How did this all get started, David? Well, probably Max is the best one to tell. He's been coming up here the longest. Yeah, we've been coming up here for about 30 years, I guess. David, what's the most uh, wild and unusual experience you've ever seen? Uh... I guess every party is about the same. Some get just a little better than others, but uh, probably the night for the full moon. Well, I think my first duty as a new member of the Tennessee Volunteer Navy is to protect you people from intruders. I noticed an Alabama boat down there. I'm going to check him out. You know, Tennessee is a decided underdog in this game, and... Bama fans kind of think that way too, and you've got something special in store for them. You bet. You see, you see those volunteer orange and uh, white balloons? Well, we're going to send them up, and this is Cornelius Bennett. We'll show you what's going to happen when they try to block them. Go ahead. I should also tell you they check them for torpedoes before they come. The 69th meeting between Alabama and Tennessee coming up. Set a Bama pass and stop them. Then in the final second of the game, a 61-yard field goal try by Alabama's Van Tiffin falls just short, and Tennessee beat Alabama for a fourth consecutive time. ABC Sports presents the 69th game between the Crimson Tide of Alabama and the Volunteers of Tennessee on CFA College Football.
It's an absolutely glorious day of weather in Knoxville, Tennessee, out of the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. And this stadium today may, in the final count, offer a record crowd. It could be. But we know they seat just over 91,000, and we know all the seats have been spoken for. So it's going to be one of the big crowds in college football for this year. And you heard right, Tennessee has beaten Alabama four straight years of scalding facts for Coach Ray Perkins and his Red Elephant. And the Tennessee Volunteers, a bit of a disappointing team at a start of the season for the Sugar Bowl champions so far. Two and three as you look through the bars of a face mask. But the Volunteers have been thrashing around a little bit under Murphy's Law, it seems. But remember this. This game today against Ofo, Alabama, is a season maker. And just down the street from the stadium stands this church with this sign in front of it. It says football is just a game, spiritually. Nevertheless, beat Bama. So it reaches all levels, and here's the Crimson Tide coming into the stadium with a record of 6-0, ranked second in the nation. They will play today before one of the largest hostile crowds that some of these young men will have ever faced. Now, Alabama has not given up on defense a single point over the last six quarters. And let's go to that subject now with Tim Brandt and talk about this bunch of crunchers wearing the white today. And on defense, they are red elephants, but the biggest elephant of all has got to be Cornelius Bennett, that linebacker. And he is fun to watch, Keith. You know, Alabama will play their All-American linebacker to the wide side of the field just to watch teams run to the short side, into the boundary. They can force teams into a certain situation because it seems they all like to run away from Cornelius Bennett. So Alabama comes back, and they move Cornelius Bennett from side to side, which consequently throws the opponents out of their rhythm. Cornelius Bennett is an impact player. Ironically, when I was talking with Ray Perkins yesterday, who also coached in the National Football League, I asked him, what makes Cornelius Bennett so special? Well, I think the thing that separates him, you know, he's got great ability. He's not the only person alive that's got great ability. He's not the only person that's 6'3", 6'4", that's 230, 235, and runs a 4440 and that's strong, and that's got quick cat-like quickness and, and change of directions and great athletic ability and so forth. He's not the only one that, that possesses those type of things. The thing that separates Cornelius Bennett with somebody else that have those similar abilities is that he's got a deep burning pride deep down in him that wants to be the best. Plays every play like it's his last, whether it's in practice or whether it's in a game. Tennessee also has an All-American linebacker, but he is a different type player. Dale Jones does not possess the type of natural athletic ability that Cornelius Bennett has, but he is smart, he is tenacious, he has intestinal fortitude, and he is an overachiever. He is not the reason that Tennessee is two and three on this season. The reason is they've had some critical breakdowns in crucial situations from various players, but they've also had a lot of injuries. Specifically, William Howard, who is the nation's leading scorer, has 10 touchdowns, 62 points. He will not play today, he's out with a knee injury. There have been other injuries, especially at the running back position, and consequently now, Tennessee has to play some 18-year-olds, guys that were in high school five months ago, and that's not the way you beat Alabama. And that has Johnny Majors concerned. And right now, we're going to be playing without the nation's leading scorer, William Howard, who's out of the game with a knee ligament. Our outstanding sophomore, who was a good freshman last year, Keith Davis, is going to be playing sparingly. He's our leading runner, frankly. Uh, Pete Panuska, another tailback's out. So we're going to be playing two freshmen for the first time, regular freshmen, and starting a redshirt freshman at tailback, uh, Bando Davis. The series record, as you can see, stretches over a lot of years, all the way back to 1901. But tucked this away, Tennessee was the last team to beat Alabama. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet. Thanks very much. And as we come into this ball game, Alabama. And plus people here in Knoxville to watch Alabama Tennessee today have their own memories from this old collegiate football series, but none may be more vivid than 1985. The Alabama Crimson Tide driving down the field in Birmingham, seemingly on their way to overcoming a 16-14 Tennessee lead. Ball linebacker Dale Jones intercepts a Bama pass and stops him. 
Then in the final second of the game, a 61-yard field goal try by Alabama's Van Tiffin falls just short, and Tennessee beat Alabama for a fourth consecutive time. ABC Sports presents the 69th game between the Crimson Tide of Alabama and the Volunteers of Tennessee on CFA College Football. It's an absolutely glorious day of weather in Knoxville, Tennessee, down on the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. And this stadium today may, in the final count, offer a record crowd. It could be. But we know they seat just over 91,000, and we know all the seats have been spoken for. So it's going to be one of the big crowds in college football for this year. And you heard right, Tennessee has beaten Alabama four straight years, a scalding fact for Coach Ray Perkins and his Red Elephants. And the Tennessee Volunteers, a bit of a disappointing team, and a start of the season for the Sugar Bowl champions so far, two and three, as you look through the bars of a face mask. But the Volunteers have been thrashing around a little bit under Murphy's Law, it seems. But remember this, this game today against Ofo, Alabama, is a season maker. And just down the street from the stadium stands this church with this sign in front of it. It says football is just a game spiritually, nevertheless, beat Bama. So it reaches all levels, and here's the Crimson Tide coming into the stadium with a record of 6-0, and ranked second in the nation. They will play today before one of the largest hostile crowds that some of these young men will have ever faced. Now, Alabama has not given up on defense a single point over the last six quarters. And let's go to that subject now with Tim Brandt and talk about this bunch of crunchers wearing the white today. And on defense, they are red elephants, but the biggest elephant of all has got to be Cornelius Bennett, that linebacker. And he is fun to watch, Keith. You know, Alabama will play their All-American linebacker to the wide side of the field just to watch teams run to the short side, into the boundary. They can force teams into a certain situation because it seems they all like to run away from Cornelius Bennett. So Alabama comes back, and they move Cornelius Bennett from side to side, which consequently throws the opponents out of their rhythm. Cornelius Bennett is an impact player. Ironically, when I was talking with Ray Perkins yesterday, who also coached in the National Football League, I asked him, what makes Cornelius Bennett so special? Well, I think the thing that separates him, you know, he's got great ability. He's not the only person alive that's got great ability. He's not the only person that's 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 that's 230, 235, and runs a 4'4", 4 4 40, and that's strong, and that's got quick cat-like quickness and, and change of directions and great athletic ability and so forth. He's not the only one that, that possesses those type of things. The thing that separates Cornelius Bennett with somebody else that have those similar abilities is that he's got a deep burning pride deep down in him that wants to be the best. Plays every play like it's his last, whether it's in practice or whether it's in a game. Tennessee also has an All-American linebacker, but he is a different type player. Dale Jones does not possess the type of natural athletic ability that Cornelius Bennett has, but he is smart, he is tenacious, he has intestinal fortitude, and he is an overachiever. He is not the reason that Tennessee is two and three on this season. The reason is they've had some critical breakdowns in crucial situations from various players. 
but they've also had a lot of injuries. Specifically, William Howard, who is the nation's leading scorer, has 10 touchdowns, 62 points. He will not play today. He's out with a knee injury. There have been other injuries, especially at the running back position. And consequently now, Tennessee has to play some 18-year-olds, guys that were in high school five months ago. And that's not the way you beat Alabama. And that has Johnny Majors concerned. And right now, we're going to be playing without the nation's leading scorer, William Howard, who's out of the game with a knee ligament. Our outstanding sophomore, who was a good freshman last year, Keith Davis, who's going to be playing sparingly. He's our leading runner, frankly. Uh, Pete Panuska, another tailback's out. So we're going to be playing two freshmen for the first time, regular freshmen, and starting a redshirt freshman at tailback, uh, Vando Davis. The series record, as you can see, stretches over a lot of years, all the way back to 1901. But tucked this away, Tennessee was the last team to beat Alabama. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet by Cigna, a leader in insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services. By Honda, all-terrain vehicles. Come ride with us. We'll show you America. Shares the longest unbeaten streak in uh, the country with Michigan. At 11-0-1, Michigan was trailing a little while ago. Tennessee just kicked off to Alabama. And Bobby Humphrey is now returning it for the Crimson Tide. And he comes out to about the 25-yard line. And there they'll go to work with this backfield. Uh, Mike Shula will be at uh, the quarterback spot. Bo Wright is in there, new to this alignment. Humphrey, of course, the key man, number 26, who is the tailback. But Gene Jokes, the other tailback, is healthy now, and he'll be sharing time with Bobby Humphrey. And these are two tough running backs. Jokes is almost like a razor blade. He is so quick that he just slashes his way through there. So here's the first offensive play of the ball game, the 69th meeting between Alabama and Tennessee. Shula pitches to Humphrey. And big one for Bobby Humphrey. A first down for him as he gets out beyond the 38-yard line. The offensive front and these two big guys in the middle there, Condon and Rose. Bill Condon, 6'2", 250, and Larry Rose, 6'4", and 270. Condon is a junior and Rose is a sophomore, and they will be key people in the offensive front today for Alabama. Just short of the 39, first down for the Tide. Again, it is Humphrey carrying the ball, and again, there is daylight in the middle as he's out past the 41, close to the 42. The Tennessee defense, now the linebackers in Tennessee's football history have, have always been great, it seems, but there's a big guy down in the trenches, number 59, who's going to be very important for them today. Mark Hovannik, 6'3", 255, from Yorktown, Virginia, is going to have to have a big game. He's going to have to anchor things down where the big guys work. And he would probably be considered capable because he's tough. This is Humphrey going for the outside. And the pulling guard gives him some room as he lays a solid block, opening the door. And the game is out close to the 49-yard line before Andre Kramer brings him down. Larry Rose, watch him pull out here and lead the way. Keith, it is critical that Tennessee stops Alabama on the first drive. They've got to keep the crowd in the ballgame because, quite frankly, right now, they don't have the personnel to play with Alabama competitively. Alabama has come out already and is doing absolutely nothing fancy. They came out with two tight ends and an eye back for every play until this one. Humphrey is out now. As they go to a set one lone back, and Shula sets step on first down looking for the pass, and he's got nobody to throw it to, and... Mike has to pull it down and eat it, but he gets across midfield for a couple of yards on the carry. Hovannik is the man who makes the tackle for Tennessee. So that time, Alabama tried to spread the Tennessee defense, and the Vols were equal to the challenge. Well, the play was made by Andre Creamer, who was playing that corner, and he had Bell taken and covered quite nicely. Shula saw that, tucked it away, and then the defensive backs released the receiver and came up and supported on the run and made the tackle. Point we made in the early on hours of the day that Shula with a career with a touchdown pass today becomes the career leader in touchdown passes for Alabama. It is second down and eight. Humphrey hit at the line of scrimmage and gets away. 
Charles Kimbrough, the outside linebacker, had a hold of Bobby Humphrey, but he couldn't wrap the arms on him. Humphrey shakes him off and picks up a first down. We talked in the pregame about Tennessee having breakdowns in critical situations. Here they make the big play. It would have brought up a long situation. But instead, look at this. They let him get out of their grasp. They're not wrapping arms. They've got to do that to beat this team, especially against a running back like Bobby Humphrey, who has sprinter speed and he has the strength to break away from tackles. And he's out of the ball game now as Gene Jokes, a 5'11", 170-pound sophomore from Gadsden, comes in for the Tide. And he is the faster of the two. And there's the hole on the left side for Gene Jokes, and he's got eight yards on that carry. And they're, they're chewing him up right where we thought they might. Well, Gene Jokes has been in the whirlpool since he injured his ankle the third week of the season, but he knows you can't help the club in the tub. So he wanted to get back in and start playing again because Humphrey was going over the 100-yard mark every time he had the football in a game. So now Jokes is back. And it's second down and two. Jelks has it again, cuts it back into the middle, bounces to the outside, first down, Alabama, at the 19-yard line of Tennessee. Charles Davis, the strong safety on the stop. He may be coming off a sprained ankle, but even when Jelks is sore and a step slower, he's still two steps faster than most guys. You see, he goes through a hole that's there and then gets into the secondary and immediately cuts it to the right side to try to find some room in that secondary between the defensive back and the safety. So it's a first down Alabama at the Tennessee 19 yard line. Bo Wright, number 40, is the fullback that's Al Bell in motion. Jelks for the ball. Block on the corner, 14 13 yard line. Pick up of six on that carry before Kimbrough brings him down. That's Charles. There are two Kimbros in the Tennessee alignment. The backup for Charles, who spells his name K I M B R O U G H. He's backed up by Brian, who spells his Kimbrough, K-I-M-B-R-O. Boy, look at number 22. You know, he was the most valuable player in the Aloha Bowl. He's been the SEC Player of the Week, Sports Illustrated Player of the Week, runs for touchdowns, throws for touchdowns, and he's only a sophomore, has not reached his full potential yet. Second down and four. Fullback, Bo Wright, up the middle, inside the five, to the one, touchdown! Nothing fancy. Bo Wright is thick. He's 5'11", 215 pounds, and he has that low center of gravity, and you'll see him as he gets to the three now. Three volunteers have him. Four volunteers. He's still driving, and he takes four of them with him into the end zone for the touchdown. Van Tiffin is out for the extra point try. He's got 116 in a row and nails this one right through the middle as Alabama extends its collective record for a new NCAA mark. And with 10-24 to go in the first quarter, Alabama takes the opening kickoff and grinds it for a touchdown. When we want to work up a sweat, nothing works like this full-size Chevy pickup. It's got the muscle of a fuel injector, 350 V8. And it's available on every full-size Chevy. It's got the strength of girder main front suspension. Where? Where? Plus double wall construction. So when you need a tough working partner, nothing works like a Chevy truck. Nothing. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a tendency in business to focus on the big picture. But at Cigna, we realize the big picture is actually made up of millions of smaller pictures. Which is why our companies provide an array of insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services to millions of individuals and thousands of businesses. One person at a time. Cigna. Personalized service to business around the world. Tennessee Volunteers 1985 Southeastern Conference Football Championship was their first since 1969. One story not directly related to football today. A Baltimore paper, the Baltimore Sun, reporting this morning that discussions are ongoing between attorneys for basketball coach Lefty Drizel of the University of Maryland 
and officials of that university and that those discussions are aimed at Drizelle's eventual departure from the university. Of course, if you were here with us at halftime last week, you heard Dick Dull, the athletic director who has resigned, say that in his words, he wouldn't put a dime of his money either way on the question of whether or not Drizelle will remain. But speculation now rife in Eastern newspapers that Lefty Drizelle is headed for an exit from Maryland. Now back to Keith Jackson. Hey. Mom. Bo Wright getting his first collegiate start, just scored his first collegiate touchdown for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And now the Tide will kick off to Tennessee with Anthony Miller, 180 pound sprinter from Pasadena, California, waiting to receive it. Another one of those sprinter wide receivers for Tennessee. High kickoff, five yard line Miller, breaks from his wedge and gets to about the 20 21. Where he is brought down. Francis, Jeff Francis opens that quarterback now for Tennessee, growing every week in that position. Number 87 is Joey Clink scale. We think that those two are going to have to hook up some today if the volunteers are going to be in the hunt. Clink scales is an outstanding and exciting wide receiver. Just don't think that Tennessee can run against this Alabama defense effectively or consistently. They have to go to the air. And you're right, Francis has improved. He was 23 of 33 passes last week against Army. Keith Davis has opened at the backfield with two sore knees. So he's in there, and on the first play, they'll throw it. They go down the middle with it, and the pass is complete to the tight end, Tim Hendricks. And Hendricks is going to have the pickup of about seven, close to eight yards. The offensive front, Wilkinson, Bruin, Kirk Dolberth, and Smith, they're big enough, but uh, they're a little short on experience. And they may perhaps might be a little short on foot speed. But it's a, a rather good offensive front for Tennessee. Pick up of call it seven, second down and three. Davis is out now, and Charles Wilson is the lone remaining back for the Volunteers. And Wilson has the ball and has a first down as he breaks it big. He blew that thing all the way to the 45-yard line, and he had a huge hole in behind John Bruin and Bruce Wilkerson. Wilkerson is the key to that offensive line. He is... All Southeastern Conference preseason All-American. You see, he just takes his man and rides him out there to the right. And here comes Wilson up inside. Well, when you start throwing to your tight end and you start going outside to the wide receivers, the running game opens up. So they've been effective now. One pass, one Interesting run. Interesting that Charles Wilson is from the same hometown as Bo Wright, Pritchard, Alabama. Jeff Francis from Mount Prospect, Illinois. Run down from behind. Guess who? And it's a fumble. And it's Alabama's football. But he, I thought he was out of bounds. No, sir. Sure. Got loose. Dropped the ball before he went out, and again, it's all everything. Cornelius Bennett coming from the backside, and nobody does that better. Best athlete in college football on defense, right there, 97. They run away from him constantly. He chases them down from the backside. Yeah, he went out of bounds, all right, but he left the ball behind him, and Derek Slaughter recovered. Four-five speed, and that is a big man. But as Ray Perkins said, he's all out on every single play. He never quits. The play go away. He chases them down from the back. Alabama's football. Come ride with me and I'll take you where you've never been before. Ride with me and I'll show you that there's really so much more. There's a place you'll never know. Come on down, don't miss the show. Ride, Ride with me, me, and I'll show you America. On a Honda ATV, the end of the road is just the beginning. With the Hayes modem, a sales manager can check inventories in manufacturing or track shipments through the mainframe across the country. A lawyer can get precedence to prepare a brief. A farmer can check commodity prices to determine when to sell. And an investor can get the information he needs from Dow Jones, Dun & Bradstreet, or even the government. The Hayes modem. It's like fitting a 10,000 book library in a 10-inch case. Slaughter. Alabama now with an opportunity. First down from the Tennessee 43. They march right down the field with the opening kickoff to go ahead 
And it's Humphrey and Wright lined up behind Shula with Al Bell in motion. Humphrey with the ball. Big hole on the right side. Once again, somebody had a hold of Humphrey, but he broke the tackle. There's a penalty flag thrown back up around the 35-yard line. First man that hit him was Darren Miller, inside linebacker for Tennessee. But I think that one's going to come back. The referee is Jimmy Harper. Clip, Alabama. Bud Mostella, the umpire. Billy Shore, the linesman. Line judge Ed Dudley. Joe Delaney, field judge. John Fleming, side judge. And the back judge is Dick Pace. In Alabama's first touchdown drive, their first possession, Humphrey ran for 32 yards. Jelks for 28 and Wright for 13. Shula picked up two. They tried to pass, or at least Mike dropped back to look to throw and pulled it down. What a break, though, Keith, for Tennessee. Again, as you mentioned, Darren Miller came through. Now, he weighs 236 pounds. Bobby Humphrey is 180 and just bounced off of him like a pinball. The ball is at the Tennessee 49 now, where it's a first down for the Tide. They've got to go to the 33. They need 16 yards for the first down. Same formation, same movement, and same man with the ball, Humphrey. And Bob is to the 44. That time, he chose to run right side behind Condon and Joe King. Alabama up front. Hoss Johnson's 270, Rose 270, Neighbors 250, Condon 250, and Joe King is 290. Auburn big at halftime over Georgia Tech. Of course, Auburn waits down at the end of the calendar, end of the season for Alabama in Birmingham. From the 44, second down, 11. You got two tight ends on the field for the tie, and this time Bell comes back to the ball. And Bell's got the ball on a reverse. Gets two blocks on the corner and gets down to about the 33, and he is close to a first down. There, there was very little deception in that particular play. They simply showed it, ran it, and uh, come up just short of the first down. Keith, this is basically the same defensive unit that we saw last year. They have nine starters back from the 1985 team that went 9-1-2 and two and was extremely impressive against Tennessee, and it just does not look like the same personnel. They aren't as fast. They aren't gambling as much. They aren't as aggressive. They aren't wrapping their arms. Third down and a yard for Alabama. Shula going for it. Clay Whitehurst, touchdown. Penalty flag. Whitehurst beat Kramer. It's going to be interference against Kramer. He pulled down his arm. Didn't make any difference. Whitehurst went up and pulled it down with his left arm one-handed. But it was a great fake by Shula. Down. The kick off. Clay Whitehurst coming home. He is from Nashville. Paul Bryant wrote him a letter when he was 10 years old. And immediately Clay Whitehurst became an Alabama football fan. And when he became the quality player that would be recruited by them, he didn't hesitate. He knew where he was going the whole time. And Van Tiffin adds the extra point. And Alabama has jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead over Tennessee with seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Look at the fake by Shula, though. He's got the ball on his hip. Now everybody is frozen. Kramer is two steps behind already, and here he comes. See that? He holds his right arm. The left arm goes up and makes the catch. Tremendous execution by Whitehurst. And remember this. Ray Perkins has never beaten Tennessee. Right now, he's got a 14 to nothing lead in the first quarter. To break free. To reach new heights. To accept the challenge. To master a more demanding world. Feel the pride. Show the world your U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. Call 1-800-327-NAVY. It's time for a change. Put yourself in today's Chevy Cavalier and listen to your heartbeat. The heartbeat of America. That's today's Chevy. A battle.
battle of the unbeatens. Alabama is second ranked in the nation. Paterno's Penn State squad is number five. Coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. Well, with four straight wins over four years, the Air Force had done to Notre Dame's Jerry Faust pretty much what they did to Japan at the end of World War II. But Lou Holtz put a stop to that. The Irish win today 31-3. Also in Giants Stadium, in a game in which only one touchdown was scored, Florida beat Rutgers 15-3. Keith? And Alabama here in Knoxville will kick off from midfield because of the off uh, defensive pass interference against Alabama. It is 14-0 Bama, and Anthony Miller is the deep man for Tennessee. Van Tippen will kick it off. The tide rolling for a shootout with Penn State next Saturday in Tuscaloosa, which you'll see on ABC. High, high kickoff. Won't be, oh, he fumbles the ball. It's loose on the ground. Alabama's got the ball. comes out of the stack with it Craig Epps a linebacker as Miller lost it dove for it and never found it Keith the play was made by Van Tippen although he was kicking from the 50 you would think that he'd kick it into the end zone he didn't he pooched it and kicked it very high let the coverage team come down because it was high it was hard to handle the ball's on the ground and now the coverage team is down there recovers and Alabama has the ball on the 12-yard line second turnover for Tennessee Alabama cashed in the first one for 43 yards, and they're trying to cash this one in for 12. Shula pitches to Humphrey. He's got daylight on the left side and down to the five. The Alabama offensive front right now in this ball game is just blowing Tennessee off the ball. They're blowing them right off the line of scrimmage. See, there's not that much of a size difference between the offensive and defensive lines here either. But it's just power football. Right now, Tennessee is not sure what's taking place, and some of those guys are looking out through their belly buttons. To the goal line goes Humphrey, but he has stopped just short. But he will have what appears to be a first down. First and goal at the Tennessee one. So the Tide trying to jump early on Tennessee, leading 14-0. They've got a first and goal. The ball is at the Volunteer 1. Two turnovers by Tennessee, and it looks like Alabama's going to cash them both. Humphrey didn't get there. He tried to go over the top. And a couple of volunteers were waiting for him. See the defensive line? Every one of them, submarine. They established a new line of scrimmage deep now on the offensive line of the scrimmage. That's exactly what you have to do. Create a pileup and let the linebackers fill and come over the top and meet the ball carrier, who also is going to try to take that aerial route. Need about a foot. Shula's got it, walks in, touchdown, Alabama. yards and if Van Tiffen successful here 21 points but it's two turnovers by Tennessee that has just absolutely deflated their sales the kick is good so he's got 119 in a row himself with 540 to go in the first quarter it's now 21 to nothing Alabama Announcing the Valvoline Four Guard I Love a Parade Sweepstakes. Win a trip for four to four of America's greatest parades. To enter, watch the next commercial and remember what the driver of the smoking car says. Then go to a participating store for details. Big parade this year. It's the economy. Oh, Russell. 
Russell, what kind of motor oil are you using? Motor oil is motor oil. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. A four-cylinder engine works harder and needs the extra protection of specially formulated Valvoline foreguard. Not much to a break this year. That's the economy. <laughs> oh, Russell! Guess what thousands of doctors are recommending for women who need extra calcium? Tums. Surprised? It's true. Tums isn't just a great antacid, it's also rich in calcium. Tums, 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 tums. Ah! You see anything? From MacGyver's Richard Dean Anderson and Valerie Bertinelli. No! The battle begins at home, Ordinary Heroes Sunday. Vince Dooley is now 19-1-1 one one at Georgia against Vanderbilt as the Dogs beat the Commodores again today. Lars Tate, 19 carries, 112 yards, three touchdowns. And in Ann Arbor, it is sticky for the Wolverines as Iowa leads 10-3 in the second quarter. Keith? Mike Shula has now become the all-time career leader at Alabama in touchdown passes. You saw that a while ago to Whitehurst. Now you've just seen him walk in for a touchdown to make it 21 to nothing and the tide kicks off and Tiffin again has it high to Anthony Miller at the five yard line and uh, he is spun down at the 21 and he's lucky he didn't lose the ball there because it suddenly got out there in a loose position inside I want you to have a look today at Wayne Davis number 58 because this defensive alignment and the way they're trying to make Tennessee work if they run the ball at all I would think Wayne Davis who is a very solid football player inside could have a big day 6 4 2 20 a senior from Gordo Alabama Tennessee comes out now Jeff Francis is the quarterback with Vando Davis and Francis's pass is a bullet thrown very hard for Joey Clink scales and it went by him and the pass was incomplete. Well, we told you early on today that Johnny Major's team had sort of been wallowing around under Murphy's law, or cloud, it seems. But Tennessee's punter Bob Garman was warming up today and pulled a hamstring and is out of the game. So what in the world do you do? Now they've come out and turned it over twice. It is second down and 10 from the 21. Pitch goes back to Vando Davis. Vando Davis started his career at Tennessee as a defensive back. He's a six-footer, 185, out of Wilmington, Delaware, redshirt freshman. And trying to get around the corner, he runs into Randy Rockwell. Randy Rockwell plays an outside linebacker position for the Tide at 6'3 and only weighs 200 pounds. But he's very quick. So it's still third down and about 10 from the 21. And Alabama is caught trying to anticipate unless somebody moved along the front for Tennessee. It's against the tide encroachment. Johnny Majors taking the visage taking on a little more of a grim look here standing in the shade at Neyland Stadium. On the defense. Five yards third makes down. it third down and five. Francis to throw. Passes away. Passes good for a first down. Up around the 33 to Terrence Cleveland, the wingback. Cleveland not very big. He's out of Sweetwater, Tennessee at 5'9", 155 pounds. Keith, when you think about it, everything that could go Tennessee's way last year did. They won nine ball games, going to the Sugar Bowl, and beat Miami decisively. Everything that could go wrong for Tennessee this year has. On first down for Tennessee, the ball out near the 34. Francis back to pass, swings it out, and the ball is dropped by Vando Davis. It'll be second down and 10. Let's join Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, as you and Tim mentioned at the top of the show, one of the reasons Tennessee is hurting this afternoon is because of the loss of their fine fullback, William Howard. He was the nation's leading scorer. Now he's troubled by a bad knee. William, it's got to be awfully tough to see your teammates down 21-0 and not being able to do anything about it. Oh, no doubt. It definitely is. Uh, I have had a strained knee this week, and uh, Alabama shows some explosive to the offense, and we got to get after him second half and continue out this first half and just come out and execute our offense and try to get back in the game. Offensively, what's happening out there? What's not happening, rather? 
Well, we just haven't really had a chance to move the ball yet. We had a fumble uh, early in the game by Francis, and we also had one on the kickoff. And offense just hasn't had a chance to get in there and execute yet. Well, maybe Jeff Francis and company can get it going. You need it bad now. I sure hope so. Okay, thanks, William. Peace. This quick drop passes away. The pass is caught for an eight-yard pickup. And Jeff Francis, just as he released the ball, was punished by Cornelius Bennett. He changed the play at the line of scrimmage. Nonetheless, Bennett is coming to the left, or coming from the backside again. He gets by Bando Davis and makes the hit. But I think that's why Francis changed the play. He saw Bennett line up on the left side. He looked to the right side and called the audible and tried to get the quick pass to that side. Pass was good for nine yards. Keith Davis is back in. Third down and one now for the Volunteers. Trying to pick up their second first down, give the ball to Wilson. And Charles Wilson hammers his way to the 45, and the Volunteers do have their first down. The way this series has ebbed to back and forth over the years, you're not out of the game at this point. But Tennessee's got to get themselves under control, quit making mistakes, and possess the ball for a time and score some points. Bando Davis is back in now at that tailback position out of the I formation. He's checking again, changing the play. Sin Davis. And he'll have another Tennessee first down as he gets to the Alabama 41. And again, big hole in the middle. So that means that Bruin and Galbraith and Wilkerson uh, are doing some work in there. And they're controlling one of the better nose tackles. You see that time, Kurt Jarvis run himself out of the play. He went to the right. And Davis came back to the left side, so effectively they didn't have to block Kurt Jarvis that time. Francis, screen, Miller, good block to get him down the sideline, out of bounds, inside the 15 at the 11. Ricky Thomas finally got him. Keith, you're seeing the maturity of a young quarterback now. Last week, he gained confidence. This week, the play prior to this one, he saw that Cornelius Bennett lined up wide, so he gave the ball inside, underneath on the quick opening. This time, he goes to the backside again, away from Bennett, and he goes to the flanker screen, so they're mixing their plays well. They're still going away from Bennett, but they're now spreading out that Alabama defense, and if it's spread out, it can't be as big and strong and come upfield as quickly. Francis gives the ball inside, and Bando Davis, running very well, finds his way all the way to the five before they can bring him down. Maybe the four. That's where they put the ball. So they can get a first down if they can punch it just inside the two. Right now, it's second down at the Alabama four. Keith Davis goes in, replacing Bando Davis. Jim Miller is out there in the fullback position. They're set up in the power eye. Come back this way with it. Carrying is 32, Charles Wilson. And Wilson is down to about, he's close to the two, but I think a little short of the first down. Wilson sat out a great portion of last season with a persistent shoulder ailment. Then he broke his forearm in this preseason, and right now he's playing with a cast on his arm. You can see it right there. See the right arm? He's playing with a cast and still has a broken forearm. It's Charles Wilson, Jim Miller, and Keith Davis, and Miller primarily in this alignment is a blocking back. Six-footer, 225-pound senior out of Nashville. Now Wilson has come off the field. No, it is, uh, yes, Charles Wilson coming off the field. Miller is a good blocker. He's six foot, 227 pounds. He's not one of the thoroughbreds. He's more of the plow horse type, and I mean that as a compliment. He works hard. He's tenacious. He's fundamentally sound, and he is a mature leader. He can block very well. He came off, turned around, and went right back in. And he lines up in the tailback position. On third and one for the first down. Alabama folks are in that end of the stadium, and they're not helping. Touchdown, Keith Davis.
just brought the crowd back into the ball game. You also just built the confidence of a very young Tennessee team. That was a very well executed offensive series. They spread the defense out. They ran away from Cornelius Bennett. When he came to the outside, they went to the inside. When he positioned himself inside, then they went on the quick flanker screen. Randy Sanders to hold. Carlos Rivez to try the extra point. The snap was wide. Sanders held it. And Rivez knocks it through. With 107 to go in the first quarter, Tennessee gets on the board. It's now 21-7, and here's the Alabama campus. of Alabama, bringing out the star quality that's in everyone is our proudest tradition. You talk about the Tennessee crowd getting into it, just listen. Davis scoring from two yards out, 21 to 7 now, as Tennessee will kick off to Alabama. And the tide sends Bobby Humphrey as their deep man. Tennessee running off 11 plays to go to 79 yards to get the touchdown. See Keith Davis turn to the camera and wave. One of the coaches grabbed him immediately and said, hey, come on, we've got a long way to go. Get away from the camera and let's play football. <laughs> he stopped just short of the goal line. He almost stepped on the goal line, which would have put him in some trouble. Here's Mike Adamley again. Well, Keith, it's not uncommon for teams before big games to pull out every single stop. Now, I don't know if there's any psychological ramifications behind this, but for the first time ever, the Tennessee Volunteers are wearing some gaudy orange shoes. They were donated by a prominent shoe company. Now, if you click your heels three times, you won't go to Kansas, but you might get your in the Alabama end zone. So far, it's only happened once this afternoon. Keep. <laughs> Al Bell goes in motion for the tide. Humphrey carries the ball up the middle, and he picks up three yards, and the Tennessee defense now taking a little heart from the success of the offense, and the game is only three. Well, I can't tell you how close Alabama came to making a mistake on that kickoff. It's a good thing he wears a size 10 instead of a size 11, <laughs> or that right. ball would be on the one. That's right. Second down and seven. Bell has been in motion on virtually every play, but he's yet to see the ball, and here he goes again. Chulo back to Humphrey. Two blockers in front of him. Big hole. First down. Alabama up at the 37. My gosh, the two pulling linemen were out there all by themselves. The other guys had sealed inside. And he had an escort for that first down. Yeah, but see what Alabama's doing is you're right. They're running Bell across there in motion, and they're running people out. They're using him to take Charles Davis out of that side, and then when he goes across, then they come back with Humphrey where Charles Davis was supposed to be. So Tennessee has to change its defense a little bit, be more aggressive, maybe not follow the motion man across the field because they're using that motion man to take and position the defensive players. And there he is right there. That's Charles Davis. Shaking up a little bit, so he's out of the ball game. Gene Jelks goes back in at tailback for Alabama. Jelks relieving Humphrey. And both of them were very prominent in that opening touchdown drive. Victor Peppers is now in for Tennessee at a cornerback spot, replacing uh, Davis. And here is Jelks wiggling through the traffic and getting up to the 46 yard line, and that's a pickup of about eight yards as the first quarter has come to a close after one in Knoxville. Alabama 21, Tennessee 7. When me and my buddies head off to West Texas, nothing works like my Chevy S10 Maxi Camp 4x4. With Instacraft four-wheel drive, the optional off-road suspension, it can take it to the wildest place in the West. The Terlingua Chili Cook-Off. Good, huh? Yeah. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Nothing. 
Who says you can't have old world taste and a new world waste? Old world aging and the new world's youthful spirit. Europe's finest hops in America's finest light beer. Michelob Light, old world quality from Anheuser-Busch. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can have it all. There's a tendency in business to focus on the big picture. But at Cigna, we realize the big picture is actually made up of millions of smaller pictures. Which is why our companies provide an array of insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services to millions of individuals and thousands of businesses. One person at a time. Cigna. Personalized service to business around the world. Power your business software into a new dimension with the Tandy 3000 computer. Important data is only milliseconds away from an advanced 286 microprocessor that delivers high-speed performance in PC compatibility. You can add up to 12 million bytes of memory and expand by sharing that power with others in your office. Discover the Tandy 3000 family of value-priced business computers at Radio Shack Computer Centers. We move to quarter number two. That tailback combination of Jelks and Humphrey has now counted for 101 yards of the ball game on 14 carries. It is second down and a long two for the tide. At their own 46, they give it a bull right. Bull right, the fullback, cuts back against the grain, muscles one man for a first down. At least it appears to be a first down as he's just over the 48-yard line. They'll check it to make sure. Charles Davis, incidentally, is back into the game after having missed the one play being shaken up. While they've checked with the change, as Davis back. Lindsey Nelson, one of the fine gentlemen in our business, they now afford the first down to Alabama among those watching today. Lindsey is now teaching here at the University of Tennessee. Always fun to see Lindsey. From the 48. Shula pitches back to Jokes. And good defensive play by Dale Jones. He got one hand and hung on. Keith, that's better than a good defensive play. That's a great defensive play by that linebacker. He came through and watch him split the backs, the blocks rather. He comes upfield quickly. All right, he gets rid of the first block. That's what you have to do. Squares his shoulders now, takes on the second blocker, and then finally splits him and reaches out to make the tackle one-handed. That's great body strength. You know, Cross was uh, trying to hold him with the belt buckle, keep him from getting through there. Hey, listen, though. He was raised in a family of 13 kids. He's competitive. He knows that feeling. He can get out of it. Second down, 11. Jelks is out. Wright, the lone remaining back. And Bo Wright bounces outside. And he is knocked out of bounds at the Tennessee 43 by Andre Kramer. So he almost exploded into the open. If Kramer doesn't get him, he's gone. the ball and don't think he has the first down Tennessee jumped him pretty well that time as uh, Alabama tried to muscle him and the volunteers clogged it up so we'll see about whether or not it's a first down and this time they may have to bring the change over Lindsey Nelson and Mel Allen Nelson is a UT graduate and Mel Allen of course an Alabama graduate and they went to New York collectively and sold NBC back in 1953 on the idea of NBC doing an Alabama-Tennessee game for Birmingham, and they did. It turned out to be a nothing-nothing tie. And uh, Lindsay tells the story saying at least the nothing-nothing tie preserved the friendship of Nelson and Allen. You see, they're just short. But look what they've come to now. You've got Maryland and Washington State, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to take this opportunity, though, because somebody very special, not only to me, but to all the college football fans in America, that's Keith Jackson is celebrating his birthday today, 58 years young. 
Congratulations, Keith. Thank you, Tim. I guess that means that since Congress uh, passed new legislation on mandatory retirement last Friday, it means I can hang around for a few years longer and irritate the sports TV critics. Right? <laughs> Chris Moore is in the fight. The deep man is Andre Kramer, defensive back. Tennessee peels off. Chris Moore puts it mile high and hangs it into the end zone. He was trying to hit the Crawford corner with it. It'll be a 42-yard punt for Chris Moore. 21-7 Alabama with 13-14 to go in the first half. Listen to the heartbeat. in today's Chevrolet Corvette and listen to your heartbeat. This year, one out of every six cars will need to have its brakes repaired. That's why at Midas, we offer a free brake inspection. If your car needs work, you know it's being done by experts. 500,000 people a year have their brakes fixed at Midas, and we're glad to have the business. But more important, we appreciate the trust. Take it to Midas. Take it to someone you trust. The Denver Broncos. Quarterback John Elway has their offense going full steam ahead. But the New York Jets plan to derail the Bronco Express on ABC's Monday Night Football. No, my wife did not print that. All right, here's Tennessee. First down at their own 20, a 21-7 Alabama lead. Jeff Francis stays in there at quarterback, and Keith Davis is in the backfield with Charles Wilson, and it is Wilson to the 25. I want you to look first in the left-hand column, the Alabama column, 128 yards rushing to just 42 for Tennessee. Now stay in that right-hand column, the Tennessee column, and come all the way down to turnovers, two for Tennessee, and that's the difference thus far in this ballgame. Second down, five. Davis is out. Wilson caught in the backfield by Kurt Jarvis. Quick big man, 6'2", 265, senior from Gardendale, Alabama. That's just good old-fashioned football right here. Watch the nose guard now. Takes the right approach, just out quicks the center. He's by him before the center can even look for the block, and he's into the backfield. Now, he doesn't know who has the football, so he grabs both. <laughs> oh, me? He took them both on. Mm. Third, third down and uh, movement along the front. Yeah, see, no wonder he got so quick. <laughs> Third down and about eight at that point. That dead ball encroachment on the defense. Yeah. See, old yeah, Kirk jumped across early that time. He yeah. wanted another lick. Wanted another one. Well, Alabama, you're watching today against Tennessee. Next week from Tuscaloosa, it'll be Penn State. The Nittany Lions undefeated. And Alabama hoping to go in uh, to the ball game undefeated. Penn State having things in hand pretty well today against Syracuse, leading 35-3 in the second half. Now it is third down and four for the Volunteers. Francis has good protection, swings it out, and they're short of the first down. I do think they're going to mark him a little short of the first down. Keith Davis, who was the safety valve, got the ball, but when he turned it upfield, he got it. Just by an inch, he got it. The Alabama defender had him bit back a little bit, but that third effort got him the first down. Well, again, see, now you watch. Francis will look to the right side and then all of a sudden go back on the little swing pass. He knows he's got some room back here in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Here comes the marking. Oh, that was Eric Thomas, uh, outside backer that hit him on first down. Got a man, Anthony Miller, wide open. He's on his way. Touchdown, Tennessee. So Jeff Francis unloads a big one to Anthony Miller and Neyland Stadium erupted. Francis throws a strike. Miller, the fastest player on this team.
15. Now look at him. He never takes his eyes off of him. He unleashes the ball. This is a 70-yard touchdown. By this time, it's too late. Kermit Kendrick, the free safety, had taken the inside bait. He got caught in the middle, never got outside to release. Touchdown, Tennessee. And Rivez in for the extra point. And we've got a ball game. With 11.39 to go in the first half, it's now 21-14. You know, Jerry, sometimes I take you for granted. You're a terrific husband, a great golfer, and a super salesman. Hey, Beth, what is this? A financial genius. You're not. Well, I got an idea. Why don't we get some advice? You put a lot into life. <laughs> you deserve to get the most out of it. Mike Stone, New York Life. Jerry Curry. Jerry. You know what's that? At New York Life, we have the resources to make the most of your resources. We offer a range of financial opportunities, including mutual funds, universal life, IRAs, and limited partnerships. Jerry, you are making the right choice. Bet Don't settle for less than you deserve. I know. Get the most out of life with New York Life. Army was heavily favored to beat Holy Cross at home, but the Crusaders, having a banner year under brand new head coach Mark Duffner, lead 17-14 with 40 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Gordon Lockbaum, Holy Cross's two-way player, played on every play except for punts in the first half. Back to you, Keith. Thank you, Jim. 21-14 ball game before more than 90,000 at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Volunteers coming up with a 70-yard pass run play. Anthony Miller, the young man from Pasadena, California. Walt Harris found him. He was out visiting the Pasadena area and came away with him. Another one of those sprinters that does so well here. High hanging kickoff goes to Bobby Humphrey. And Humphrey coming up the right side gets to the 25 to the 26. Let's take another look at the hookup of Francis de Miller. Two keys here. First, Robinson. The cornerback on that side for Alabama. He came up to support the run. Didn't think they were going to throw. He guessed he guessed wrong. Then the safety. You see him there in the middle of your screen. Has already taken the bait inside. And he is nowhere in sight. And there's not a soul in the field other than maybe Grady from Tennessee that could catch Miller from behind. Alabama comes out. The crowd is back into the ball game now. First down tied. Their own 26. Humphrey carries. And Bobby gets a first down for Alabama as he picks up 11, almost 12 yards on that gallop with Milton Gordon bringing him down for the ball. Now the offense, Keith, has done its part. It's put 14 points on the board. The defense has to do its part now. The defense, of course, as we said, has nine starters back from last year's team that played extremely well, won the SEC title, and went into the beat Miami in the Sugar Bowl. But right now, it's the young kids, the freshmen playing offense, that have done all the damage. Humphrey again. And another first down and more as Bobby Humphrey. He's running like a 240 pounder. People are just bouncing off of him, and Bobby weighs only 185. But he is so quick. Yeah, I'll tell you something, though. He is the team's leading rusher. They give it to him almost 15 times a game, and he averages over five yards per carry. Now, that's reliability. He also is one of the best receivers on the club. But you see here, he tucks that ball away, and any time a defender comes near him, you see that left hand going rap. He now has 12 carries, 103 yards. Alabama on the Tennessee 36. Gene jumps in at tailback. He bounces outside, and he picks up nine yards. Well, there's something, aren't there, those two? Humphrey, 185, jumps only 170. But both of them just cut quick. Oh, I'll tell you, this is turning into a track meet. These games often do. They often do. I'm impressed, though, with that guy, Ray Perkins. He has his guys that give up two touchdowns. It's now 21-14, and right away, he sends that offense back onto the field. He says, line them up, straight ahead, no fair dodging. Let's go after him. Second down and one. Jumps, daylight in the middle, and another for Alabama first down at the Tennessee 16-yard line. 
And they're tearing him up in the middle. Charles Davis, the strong safety, making that tackle. The 14 Tennessee points, the most scored against Alabama's defense since last year's Auburn game. That offensive line goes 270, 270, 250, 250, and 290. And we're using every bit of that strength right now. First down side, Volunteers 16. Jokes again. Clogged up, bounces on outside, and picks up another eight yards. Tennessee, excuse me, Keith, Tennessee has to surround him. They've got to get more leverage on the corner. The outside linebackers have to force everything back inside because Jokes and Humphrey are taking that corner and picking up five, ten yards at a carry. They've got to pinch him, pinch him back in. Timeout called by Tennessee. It'll be second down and four Alabama inside the Tennessee 10 when we come back. To photograph the Earth's resources from the air, they say you need a camera that can see through clouds. Fair chance. Can't be done. But Goodyear said... Let's try a new way. ...and developed a special kind of radar. Goodyear? Goodyear. Goodyear. Yeah, the Aerospace Group. Radar that not only sees through clouds, but gives you pictures as sharp as some cameras. Good thing we didn't listen to what they say. of the unbeatens. Alabama is second ranked in the nation. Paterno's Penn State squad is number five. Coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. Ray Perkins looking for his first win since he became the head man at Alabama against Tennessee. Johnny Majors has won four in a row. It is Alabama's ball, second down and four. The ball just inside the Tennessee 10 yard line. Jelks and Bo Wright split in the backfield now. New alignment for the tie. Jelks. He's got the first down as he gets inside the five to the four. It'll be first and goal, Alabama. People have to be conscious that the last time Alabama scored, it was a bootleg by the quarterback on the outside corner. They gave up that corner. Now they've got to penetrate, shut down the middle, but don't let anybody outside. Jump. Touchdown. got that right. You can see him pulling. Even neighbors got out there this time. And instead of going straight ahead, they slice to the right. He's got all kinds of big folks out in front of him, and he just takes the one tackler into the end zone with him. And Tippin for the extra point. He's good. 9.47 to go in the first half, and it's 28-14 Alabama. The way these guys are going up and down the field, we may need three digits on the scoreboard. Johnny Major's job to go over to his young kids and say, hey, look, we got 14 points. Let's just keep going. We can come back. You have to believe in your coach. I don't care what he tells you. If he says a mosquito can pull a wagon, don't question. Just jump on. And that's what he has to do now. He has to pump up these young freshmen and tell them, look, we can move on these guys. You're faster than they are. Let's go after them. And Tiffin, incidentally, has 120 straight conversions. He's just five short of the NCAA record. And Alabama already holds the uh, consecutive extra point record uh, stretching through three different kickers at 179 straight. There are your top ten scorers and we look at the Penn State score with interest because next week we'll be seeing the Nittany Lions a 
against Alabama in Tuscaloosa here on ABC at 3 Eastern time next Saturday. Let's look at Hayden Fry's boys going against Michigan 10-3 at the half. Cancel practice one day this week, Hayden did, because he had 43 players that were all nicked up. Here's the kickoff, and it's a good hanger going down to Miller. It takes it right on the sidelines at the nine-yard line. And there's a lot of traffic on that sideline, but he gets it out across the 25 near the 27. There, Tennessee will go to work. Talking about Hayden Fry, I suspect that was a coaching ploy. Build the confidence of Michigan a little bit. Telling them, painting the moon blue, saying all our guys are banged up. We don't even know if we'll be able to field a team. They come out and just take them to task. He's been known to do that. The only man to win Coach of the Year honors in three conferences, Southwest, Missouri Valley, and Big Ten. Around the 27th, first down, Tennessee. Charles Wilson is your long remaining back. That's Clink scales in motion, gives them trips on the top side of the picture. And Francis goes that way to Miller, and he catches the ball falling down and loses back to about the 24. He may have had a little daylight. He had a couple of blockers in front of him, what were the three wide receivers on that side, but lost his footy. Davis comes back in as tailback now. Macy Tony Thompson, a freshman from Lake Wales, Florida, before the day is over. Miller and Clink scales the wide people on second down and close to 14. Give it to Mando Davis, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage of the 27. They say Tony Thompson had a very, very good week of practice and is an exciting little guy, 5'8", 175, out of Lake Wales, Florida. Well, they've got three freshmen they're very high on, Tony Thompson, Reggie Cobb, and Greg Amsler, but they wanted the red shirt, all three of them, and now just because of the injury factor, they're not able to. They go back to the three-wide alignment with Wilson alone remaining back, third down and about 10. And we've got penalty flags. You can imagine how hard it is to hear with more than 90,000 people all involved in this big bowl. Alabama, part of the reason they practiced inside this week was so they could play music and loud noise on the amplifier. Dead ball, illegal motion, false start on the offense. So that the Tide could get used to the loud noise and put it on the amplifier and blasted it the whole time practice was going on. There's a look at New York City. We'll get a crowd count before we get done. But this time of the year, it can just be glorious down here. What with the leaves turning and the bright blue sky, I don't see a cloud. We've got that kind of a day today. We've had a full moon the last two evenings. So it's third down at about 15 as the ball comes back to the 23. If Francis goes out to dinner tonight, he'll be writing notes. He won't have a voice left. <laughs> Screaming down the line, gets some protection, gets his pass away down the middle, and it is incomplete. Trying to get the ball to Clink Scales. Joey was out in the middle of the secondary, but he threw the ball behind him. And so Tennessee will have to punt it. Now here comes a problem for Tennessee because the Tennessee punter hurt himself, pulled a hamstring warming up, and Jim Esmond has to come in and do the punting. He's a senior. So they've lost Garmin, who was averaging just under 44 yards per punt. Now Jim Ashman is slammed into the breach. Let's see how he does. Whoa. Not bad. <laughs> Greg Richardson coming across, fumbles the ball out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Alabama. So that's a 40-yard punt. So Jim Asman answers the call and does well on his first attempt at 7.35 to go in the first half. There's a tendency in business to focus on the big picture. But at Cigna, we realize the big picture is actually made up of millions of smaller pictures, which is why our companies provide an array of insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services to millions of individuals and thousands of businesses. One person at a time. Cigna. Personalized service to business around the world. I own a PC and a VCR, a condo on the beach, and my own company. But I don't own a car. I lease with GMAC. 
For me, leasing was smarter than buying. It's just good money management. And since I worked out the terms with my GM dealer, I can pay less each month. It was easy. Now I've got the new car I want, and leasing frees up my money for other things. GMAC Leasing, only at your GM dealer. For you, it just might be smarter than buying. Crimson Tide Man, rolling his videotape. 95,116 at Neyland Stadium watching the game today. Alabama to the attack now. First down for the Tide, their own 38-yard line, leading 28-14 in the second quarter. This is Bobby Humphrey. Boy, is he having a day, huh? My goodness, he's up to the 45. That's a seven-yard pickup. Humphrey has carried 13 times in the first half, picked up 100. 10 yards. Well, if you're on defense, you're saying, is that 26 back there or 22? And somebody turns and says, who cares? They're both having big days. They're fast and they're getting through us. Right. Jelks has 75 yards on 11 carries. Second down and three. This time, Humphrey is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Mike Whitehead, middle guard, a junior from Americus, Georgia. And he put his hat butt on his number. Bobby Humphrey gained over 7,000 yards as a high school player, and you can only speculate on how good he can become. Third down and four. Mike Shula back to throw. Passes away, Al Bell sees it for the first time, makes the catch, first down, Alabama, Tennessee, 42. Donahue, the defensive coordinator at Tennessee, who did such a sensational job last year, puts in a very aggressive defense, gambles quite a bit, likes the blitz. That time they had man coverage, and you can't guard him man-to-man. -man. No, they sure. also sent Humphrey out to clear out. Not a pick, but it sure was a clear out that took the corner and sent Bell underneath of him. Of course, they tease you with Bell before they ever give it to him. This is for right, big hole. First down, Alabama, inside the 30 and the 29. This is a guy that's played three different positions at Alabama. I think he's finally found a home. He's a little guy. He gets lost behind the big ones. He's only 5'11", but he's powerful. See how low he stays to the ground? And after he's hit once, then he even gets lower. Bill Condon, 77. Watch him. Put the man right out of it. Handoff goes to go right again. Outside, cut it back inside, and picked up about five yards. Well, we'll find out something, won't we, next Monday night when the Denver Broncos play the New York Jets. Broncos are undefeated at six and zero. Oh. Jets five and one. Should be a tremendous game. Nine o'clock Eastern time. It's a short five. The ball just short off the Tennessee twenty-four. Five fifteen to go. First half. Two yards that time. The biggest crowd they have ever had at Neyland Stadium was last year, Vanderbilt in Tennessee, 97,372. But this 95 plus bunch today will get into the top 10 in all time attendance marks. Well, you know, I can't help but think back to that replay we just showed of Condon. Just standing the man straight up. I don't care how big you are. Once you stand him up, you can control him. Condon, one of the strongest men on the offensive line. He squats 606 pounds. Bobby Humphrey to tail back. There's contact along the line of scrimmage. On third down and about two. Jimmy Harper. Against Alabama. Greg Richardson comes into the lineup now for the Tide, and uh, Angelo Stafford goes out at tight end. Dead ball, false start on the offense. And Alabama looking at third down and about seven. 
just inside the Tennessee 27. It's a big break for Tennessee now. This is a big third down play. They're going to send Richardson and Bell out here together. Bottom of the picture. That's double trouble. Here comes Jones, too. They go the other way to Humphrey. First down, breaks it. Touchdown, Alabama. Dale Jones line up on the other side get down he was going to he's in a three-point stance he was going to blitz so they came the other way ran away from him and it was all clear the alley was there and Tippins extra point is good and even four minutes to go in the first half and Alabama jumps out to a 35 14 lead I've been shot at shot up and shot down so I don't take chances on anything. I won't touch a filter that isn't from AC. Why mess with air filters that can't go for up to 30,000 miles? Or oil filters that can't deliver up to 15,000? For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. If you put your muscle into a job, use your head and do it with AC Delco. Power your business software into a new dimension with the Tandy 3000 computer. Important data is only milliseconds away from an advanced 286 microprocessor that delivers high-speed performance in PC compatibility. You can add up to 12 million bytes of memory and expand by sharing that power with others in your office. Discover the Tandy 3000 family of value-priced business computers at Radio Shack Computer Centers. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Valvoline Motor Oil, where motor oil is not just motor oil. And by Radio Shack, the computer experts. Alabama possessions, touchdown, 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 punt, touchdown, touchdown, 35-14. Just when Tennessee made a threat to get back into the hunt at 21-14, the Tides open it up again. And Tiffin kicks off to Anthony Miller. He wanted to let it go out of bounds. It looked like it was going to, but it bounced straight ahead and into the end zone, and Tennessee will have it at their own 20. Here's Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, you mentioned that uh, there's a, an attendance record of sorts here, actually the second highest attendance in Tennessee history. One day they'll be have a chance to set an attendance record. The University of Tennessee is second behind only to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. In about 1990, they're going to add another 10,000 stands in the south end zone. Then uh, Nayland Stadium will really be something else. It's something special already. First down from the 20, Francis back to throw. Gets it down the middle. He's got the tight end, Hendricks. And Hendricks has got a first down out at the 39. A pickup of 19 yards, Kermit Kendrick brought him down. Well, he's their possession type receiver. They've got to get the ball to him more. He's 6'5, 232 pounds. You see, he just comes down and just clears the safety, comes into the zone and finds the seam, and they hit him. Best yeah. part about Tim Hendricks is he's very effective inside or outside. Bando Davis. Delaware native son comes on up across the 40 to about the 43. Francis in the ball game, 8 of 11 for 142 and a touchdown. Time remaining in the first half against Army last week. The game Tennessee lost on block punt late. He was over 300 yards. And he's checking off again. the other way with Bando Davis and there's nothing there. Look Alabama came the out with a ball but uh, it's Cornelius Bennett getting a free canter. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Cornelius has fun playing football, I'll tell you that. He even acts like a pro. He didn't talk to the media for three weeks. <laughs> they said he was hot dogging it, so he says, all right, I'll show you what a hot dog is. I won't talk to you. I can understand that. Third down and six. Francis back. Dumps it off. It's short of a first down to Keith Davis. It's the second time we have seen that play, and this time uh, Davis is knocked out with some authority, a yard short of the first down. Jim Lafley will update you with scores and highlights. Tim McCarver will check in from Chase Stadium where the World Series begins tonight. And we'll go over the highlights, though I don't know if we'll have time to cover all the scoring. They have to hold them an extra 20 minutes. It's fourth down, and I think Tennessee's going for it. They are. Might as well, fourth down in the yard. Keith Davis hit behind the line of scrimmage, fighting back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. He is stopped. Wayne Davis, number 58, that inside backer, came firing through and knocked him off balance, and he could never get any momentum, and he comes up short, and Alabama owns the football at the Tennessee 48. Now Keith Davis is playing with an injured knee. We didn't even know if he'd be in the ball game. As a matter of fact, they say the knee probably needs surgery. He says, I'm scared to death of that surgery. Let me try to rehabilitate it first. You can see the big knee brace he's wearing on his right leg. And he's stumbling from the get-go. There's no chance that he's going to get a first down right there. They should have just loaded up, powered ahead, and gone for that yard straight ahead. Now, with 1.55 to go, Alabama's got a chance to put some more points on the board. Getting possession at the Tennessee 48. We're up to our elbows in volunteer this week, and Tim McCarver, though not a volunteer as such, but a native son of Memphis. Nebraska rolling big today, 41 to 3, and Oklahoma State giving Oklahoma all they want in that old traditional out in the plains. Auburn continuing undefeated. USC and Arizona State playing today out west. I didn't know if you were going to make this ball game. The way that last National League playoff game was going, I thought you'd still be sitting there calling it. <laughs> All right, it's Jokes and Doug Allen now in the pullback for Alabama. Shula fakes it to Al Bell, looks for Richardson, goes for Jokes instead, and Gene can't get to it. So the pass is incomplete. That's a rundown we told you about a while ago. On Alabama's possession. Of course, they have had a uh, pretty good field position, haven't they? Nonetheless, they've been authoritative in the ground they've covered. They certainly have. Second down and ten for the tide. Jokes is out now. Angelo Stafford comes in, an extra tight end. Leaving Doug Allen the lone back, and Doug's got the ball. And knocked out of bounds at the 44. So he gained four yards. Doug Allen is just back from a knee problem. He's been out for several weeks because of a badly injured knee. It's good to see him get back in the line. Well, that's the worst thing you could possibly have is a knee injury in football. Consequently, it's the weakest joint on the body's strongest limb. a few people by saying it, but artificial surface is very tough on the legs to play on. Bobby Humphrey is back in. He's got 148 yards in this first half on 16 carries. Don Shula looking around at the Tennessee set, looking at the people he's got on the field offensively, and he doesn't like it. So he spends a time out to talk about it, and we'll have a visit to the Tennessee campus. The University of Tennessee a place where learning can move in as many directions as you care to take, in a form clearly aimed at seeking new choices, that examines new definitions and gives shape to your personal future. Whether you see yourself in the sciences or the arts, at Tennessee, we want to put you in touch with the special view you hold. This is Tennessee, a place where you can shape your future. 
Knoxville, of course, at the World's Fair here a few years ago. And their sun sphere still stands tall among the buildings in the city, just over behind the stadium. For Alabama, it's third and six now. Out of time, 151. Mike Shula back. He's got all day and finally takes off and runs for the first down. Inside the 35 to the 32. Well, Mike Shula is smart, he's composed, he's well-schooled in the fundamentals, he's innovative, he's elusive. But the most important element is he is surrounded by talent, and he is a leader, and he doesn't make many mistakes in critical situations like that one. Give you an idea of how dominant Alabama has been in this first half. They have 290 yards rushing, 51 to Tennessee. Humphrey goes in motion and the officials stop him before the snap. But Keith, we said coming in, Tennessee had to throw to be successful. Delay of the game on the offense. I've been looking around for the last 20 minutes trying to find, oh, there it is, stuck way back in the crowd. I don't know. I, I guess you could see it from the field, the 25 second clock. There it is, but it's kind of tucked away. You know, Tennessee was having some problems getting out and getting the play called and getting the play off with the line of scrimmage, so they had a brand new clock put on the practice field this week. And they worked with a clock out on the practice field. All right, it's first down and 15. Shula's pass down the middle, Bell. No good. Tried to curl his body back to get it. The pass was just a little short, but he was open. With the score of 35-14, Johnny Majors now has taken off the headset and all that the umbilical cords to the coaches upstairs, and he started prowling the sidelines. Well, he's got 137 remaining in the half, and he wants to get that quick jump to the locker room. He's got a lot to talk about. Second down and 15. Humphrey. I tell you, I hope he's been taking notes, though. He has. I saw him <laughs> writing a while ago. It's a gain of six that time for Humphrey. <laughs> he's an outline. It's a pretty tough football team down there on that field wearing white. Mm. Boy, to make matters worse, they come into the ball game mad. They haven't won here. Haven't beaten Tennessee in four times. Third down and nine. Shula going down the middle for Howard. Cross the tight end. Touchdown, Alabama. It's Stafford, Angelo Stafford, who makes the catch, number 86. Boy, I tell you, we talked about it, though, Keith. You know, this is a gambling-type defense, and they come with the blitz. Anytime there's a blitz, there's man-to-man -man coverage. And when you get coverage and you have a big guy like Stafford back there, look, his stride, two steps, and he's covering five yards, and he's going to get by the little defensive backs. Stafford is 6'5", as is Cross. Stafford a little lighter at 195 and gets his first touchdown of the season. The extra point kick is good. And with 52 seconds to go in the first half, it is 42-14 Alabama, and six different Alabama players have scored. And when you talk to the Tennessee players and you say, what's going wrong with this team this year, especially defensively? They say, well, we're an aggressive defense. We've been gambling a lot. People now know that we're going to blitz. We're going to gamble, and they're catching us in situations that are critical, like this one. Man-to-man -man coverage down deep. Angelo Stafford, the guy you, you're not really expecting to have the football. I mean, everybody's watching Bell. They're watching Richardson. Why worry about the tight end? Alabama doesn't throw there very often. Howard Cross has only had two catches all year. So now they go to Stafford, and he sneaks right down the middle. Anytime you're in a two-deep zone, the middle is vulnerable. Anytime you're in a man-to-man -man situation, it's up to the receiver to beat him. That time, Stafford beat him decisively. 
Yeah, but one of those two catches uh, by Cross went for a touchdown. Well, he's caught four actually, and uh, one of those went for a touchdown in Notre Dame. So they don't use the tight end that much, as Tim said, but when they do, he oftentimes walks into the bank. And Tiffin kicking off again. He's going to have a sore leg. Hooks it to the left side, and that one is out of bounds. So it'll cost him five, and he'll kick it again from the 30. Kent State and Alabama next Saturday. That will be one of the highlight games of the season because the Nittany Lions won big today, and they come rolling in undefeated. And right now, you would have to surmise that Alabama has a better than even chance to go in undefeated at home against Penn State. I guess the last time they got together down there was what six nothing ball game. Wasn't it? Well, I tell you what, though, this is an Alabama team that has not made a mistake today. hasn't uh, done anything. hasn't shown any weaknesses. And of course, you know Joe Paterno. He always has his team ready. Somebody asked me yesterday. They said, "How good do they look?" I said, "I'm not so sure they ever look good. They just win." This time it's a high hanger. Anthony Miller comes out to his 14 to take it. Pops it up to about the 39-yard line. Mike Shula is going to the clubhouse. They're holding the right arm of Shula. And it may be a burn or it might be an injury. We'll try to check it as best we can. Oh, no, that could make a difference in the Alabama season. Shoo could it ever. The tied offense, 375 yards here in the first half. From the 38, that's where they mark it. Jeff Francis with 46 seconds. Back to throw. He's got Miller on a fly, goes underneath. And the pass is caught by Hendricks trying to get out of bounds. I don't think he did. Clock's still running. Nope. Now they call time. They've got one timeout remaining. Alabama was in a prevent defense, had only three guys rushing the football. Everybody else was playing very loose, taking away the long deep passes. So instead, Tennessee went underneath. But he has got to get to that sideline and stop the clock. And he didn't. Again, Mike Shula has gone to the clubhouse. He's in the locker room with the doctors and the trainer. I'm sure Mike Adam was following him in, too. Mike, do you have anything on it? Play before, before the touchdown pass, Shula was scrambling out of bounds. He was taken pretty hard down to the turf, and he grabbed his right arm there. Not sure the trainers aren't if he jammed his shoulder or if it was. It's definitely not a turf burn. Uh, it's something that could be a little more serious than that. And again, we'll just have to check, wait and see. We're going to check a little bit more in the locker room. All right, Mike, thank you. Second down and two for Tennessee. Round to 46. Francis gets it off, bounces it in front of Charles Wilson, and it's incomplete. And the reason he bounced it was he heard, I'm sure, the pounding hooves of Cornelius Bennett coming from the other way. Tennessee's picked up 206 yards in this first half. It's been a wide open offensive ball game to this point. Right now, Alabama's got a big lead of 28 points, 42-14. Third down and two. Francis' pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. Slapped down by Cornelius Bennett. He almost intercepted it. I can't remember seeing a linebacker with as much agility as he has. He's acrobatic. I think he could play any one of the 22 positions on a football field. Watch this now. On the left part of your screen, here comes the pass. Here comes Cornelius Bennett. Now he's going after it. Well, he was two yards shy, but he, he was headed in the right direction. Though, when he did it, he? Both hands. Asman is in now to punt in relief of Garman, who pulled a hamstring in the warm-up. At the first and 40, there's nobody back to accept it for Alabama. The ball's going to roll around and roll back on inside the 10-yard line. But it's a relatively academic point at this time in the first half. The clock stops at eight seconds to go. That was a 47-yard punt. What were the rules? Now, who comes out at quarterback for Alabama? It should be David Smith. David Smith, a sophomore out of Gadsden, Alabama, six foot, 172 pounds. 
now, isn't it? Most playing time that he's had was in the alumni game. He was 9 of 21 for 63 yards and two interceptions. Well, if you've got to give uh, the backup quarterback some playing time with a 42-14 halftime lead, it's not a bad place to do it, is it? And don't forget, they also have Vince Sutton on the bench. Vince Sutton started against Tennessee here in Knoxville the last time the Alabama Crimson Tide came into this park. That snap ends the first half of play. So after 30 minutes, Alabama dominating, leading 42 to 14 over Tennessee. Tennessee defensive back Charles Davis talks about the college experience. There are many pressures of playing major college football. There's the pressure to win and also to satisfy yourself. To combat this pressure, I try to maintain a discipline off of the field. I get involved with other campus activities, try to do well in the classroom, and meet a wide variety of people. By doing these things, I can hopefully avoid being just a football player. The preceding brought to you by the College Football Association. Again, to, in case you were out when we told you, Mike Shula has had the bandage put on and some stitches in the right elbow where he had a cut. And he's warmed up and he's ready to play in the second half as Alabama will kick off to Tennessee. Anthony Miller is the deep man. 14 ball game, the tide rolling in the first half, and once again, Van Tippen has a high hanging kick down there, and the coverage is normally very good with an Alabama team when you have that kind of uh, high hanging kick. In case you wonder where Al Troutwig is, this is his best seat in the house today. <laughs> He's in Hawaii, where he is covering the triathlon, now where he is supposed to be covering the triathlon. From that picture, I'm not so sure. So we have the pleasure of the company of Mike Adamley with us today. And Tennessee comes out. First down, just outside their own 28. First down. They need a lot of points in a hurry. Jeff Francis back will throw on first down. Goes underneath for his tight end and misses it. No, it isn't either. It's Vando Davis coming out of the backfield. And he missed it. The stats at halftime. 295 yards rushing in the left-hand column of Alabama. Now, Bobby Humphrey, 154 yards and 17 carries. Gene Jux, 71 yards and 11 carries. Then you come down that right-hand column again. We told you about the two Tennessee turnovers. We got holding on the defensive team before the ball was thrown at the automatic first down. So Tennessee gets a break early. But those two turnovers set the tempo and helped make it a 21-0 Alabama lead. Tennessee fumbled in its first two possessions. Now coming onto the field is Thomas Woods, another redshirt first freshman from Gallatin, Tennessee, for the Volunteers. And with the penalty, the ball moves out to the 39. That is the seventh penalty flag on Alabama today. Francis pitches the ball back to Bando Davis, and he's got some daylight around the corner, crossing midfield and getting to the Alabama 49 before Kermit Kendrick brings him down. The individual stats. Sewell, a three for five, 78 yards, two touchdowns. We told you he had stitches in his right arm. He's a left-handed passer. And then Francis, Jeff Francis had a fine first half, 10 of 15, 155 yards, no interceptions, and a touchdown. Here are the defensive tackles, but I want you to look at down the bottom, Cornelius Bennett, three tackles. He had a whole lot of hurries, though. Francis goes down the middle. This time it's the tight end Hendricks, and him goes way up to pull it down at the Alabama 29, and another volunteer first down. So the balls have come out storming here in the second half. No question but the fact that Tennessee has a lot of good young talent. They just have to gain confidence. They have to hit this critical situations. They've got to come back now. Again, we told you the tight end is the possession receiver. He's been successful against Alabama. They've got to continue to go to him. Bando Davis again, cuts it back inside and picks up about three yards on that carry. Little bit of Davis comes in now. He's a little quicker out of that tailback spot. You could see a little bit of the inexperience in Bando Davis on that last run. The hole was there, but he was indecisive. By the time he cut up into the hole, it was already closed. Gives the ball to Miller. Miller's being chased by Cornelius Bennett and decked all the way back on the 43-yard line. 
There is nothing like him. He is chasing a sprinter. Miller is a sprinter, and he's tiny, and he's fast. And here comes Cornelius Bennett, comes back after him. Now, we showed you he didn't have many tackles in the first half, but of the two tackles he had by himself, one was a sack, one was a forced fumble. A lot of hurries where Francis hurried his throw out of rhythm, and he had countless times when the Tennessee team went the other way. That's a loss of 15 yards. Pass is away underneath the Keith Davis, and Davis is caught and brought down at the 36 by Greg Gilbert, a linebacker that was filling that zone defensively for the Tide. And now Tennessee, with that big loss, sends in Carlos Rivez. Well, this is men's size. 43 yard line. It's a 53 yard field goal attempt. That would match his longest effort. And there isn't much wind that's a factor inside this huge bowl. 53-yard field goal try by Rivez. He's got enough leg, but it didn't hook for him. It stayed to the right, and he misses from 53 yards, and the score remains the same. Do you have anything in aviation? The Army's most technical training. Are there any openings in communications? Is also the Army's most popular training. I'd really like computers. So it pays to have a reservation. Electronics. If you qualify, you can get a guaranteed reservation for the training you want up to 12 months in advance, even if you're still in high school. We'll see you after graduation. Find your futures in the arms. Congratulations. You're invited to a groundbreaking. The new Nissan Pathfinder 4x4. Now there's Pathfinder's off-road ruggedness, 3-liter V6 power, 235 tires, and extra-long wheelbase. Now there's Pathfinder's civilized ride, cabin-adjustable coil spring suspension, and rich interior. Nissan Pathfinder. Now the adventure begins. The breakthrough is Pathfinder. The name is Nissan. The Denver Broncos. Quarterback John Elway has their offense going full steam ahead. But the New York Jets plan to derail the Bronco Express on ABC's Monday Night Football. With the miss by Rivez from 53, Alabama takes over the ball. First down at their own 36. Akshula comes out at quarterback with the single back offense for Alabama. Bull right. Double wide with Richardson and Bell. Greg has not caught a ball today, and the ball is given a right, and... <laughs> he... Oh, my goodness. Bo had, had a mile to run, but he expected contact, didn't get it, lost his balance, and he fell down up on the 43. You're looking at the bandage on Shula's arm, but you know, Keith, you've seen a lot of guys stumble today. This is a brand new rug, brand new artificial turf here at Neyland Stadium in Tennessee. And when you have that new rug, it's not worn down. You have to exaggerate your steps. Consequently, a lot of guys stumble and trip their way through it. They stay in the single back, and Bo Wright picks up the first down as he bangs his way up to about the 47. On that previous play, you saw Wes Neighbors really opening the hole for Wright. And I tell you, Wes Neighbors, who is right now down on the field uh, and shaken up on the play, that's Neighbors who's down, the son of Billy, who was a great player himself. You know, he's a big, tough, and durable guy. He started 38 of a possible 39 games at Alabama, and that's not a receiver who's not involved with every play. That's right in the middle of the mess, down there bumping and grinding with the big boys. If you own a house, you got to own a shop back. This baby's got the power to pick up almost anything. Got broken glass, nails, or wood chips? Shop back gobbles up stuff that would kill an ordinary vacuum. Uh a shop vac wet dry can even vacuum water like a flooded basement. The washing machine is flooding the house. No. Oh. Every house needs a shop vac. Starting at under $50, a shop vac is heavy duty, not heavy money. And remember, if it doesn't say shop vac, keep shopping. All over the country, people are learning about the new Nissan 200SX. They're examining the many important design changes on the outside. But more, they're experiencing the one important change on the inside. The new fuel-injected overhead cam V6. It's America's new super coupe. And it's just waiting to change your attitude. 
quality and power is 200SX. The name is Nissan. A battle of the unbeaten. Alabama is second ranked in the nation. Paterno's 10 state squad is number five. Coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. It's the right ankle of Wes Neighbors they're working on. He got up and walked off the field, all right. Let's go back to the play and see how you sustain the injury. The right ankle. Middle of your screen, number 54. You see them roll over on that ankle? Oh, there's a lot of weight coming in on that. He is the anchor on that tied front wall. Mike Zuka, a freshman from Newton, Georgia, comes in. He's a mere 240 at the center position. And Mike Shula on first down, sets to throw, gets it away, intended for Greg Richardson, and a little too high for a 5'9 receiver out there. Penalty flag on the field, and they continue to look at that right ankle of Wes Neighbors. You could see it was taped, too, Keith. I mean, it was taped from the get-go. And they can't afford to lose him the week prior to Penn State. Holding on the offensive line, 10 yards. First down. So Alabama makes another mistake here in the second half, and that will back them up. They move back to their own 38. They've got to go to the Tennessee inside the Tennessee 43 to get a first down. the ball to Gene Jelks coming over the right side Jelks moves it out to the 42. You know Michigan what now is going to take the lead in the fourth quarter against Iowa. Keith, you know what was ahead. fun on that last play was watching the center that came in to replace West Neighbors. It's Mike Zuga. He's just a freshman 6'3", 238 pounds and he took the middle guard and put him on his back. We used to call that a pancake. Mike's probably got it jacked up a little bit, getting a chance to play early on in the ball game. Second down, fake. Shula goes the other way. Keeps it himself and gets it up to the 49-yard line before he is thrown down. So the Tide will be looking at third down and eight. Kelly Ziegler made that hit for Tennessee. Rushing yards today for Alabama, 318 so far, and we've got ten and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Back in 1973, Alabama ran for 748 yards against Virginia Tech. That's a season for a lot of clubs. Mm -hmm. Third down and eight. Shula's pass intended for Al Bell is knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Fred Bennett. He's another player for Tennessee from Pritchard, Alabama. He must have a pretty good high school program in Pritchard, Alabama. Watch this freshman. Middle of your screen, number 53. That's Zuga again. Came in for West Neighbors. Just get that middle guard. Of course, his hands are wrapped around him. Looks like an old-fashioned dance. Let him go, though, seeing his hands got out and knocked the, the ball down. All right, the punt by Chris Moore. Spins it to Kramer at the 14. Gets back to about the 22 before he is brought down. So with 9.49 to go, Alabama has a holding call. Tennessee holds Alabama and forces the punt. Mr. Goodrench knows your car's engine is an inferno of heat and friction. 100, 200 piston strokes of engine wear per second. It needs the life-saving fluid that protects it right. GM Goodrench Motor Oil. Takes the friction, takes the heat. It's everything General Motors asks for in a fine motor oil. Get it from Mr. Goodrench. No one knows your GM car better. No one. You know, the weirdest things happen to me, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I mean, here I am, stocking up for Halloween. I got my steaks, got my ribs. Then when I ask the sock boy where the Coors Light is at, he points me to the Coors and Coors Light Halloween display, and I'm on it. <laughs> Whoa, it's like deja vu. Whoa, it's like deja vu. <laughs> Look for it where you buy beer. I shop here because they slash prices. 
There goes another one. Happy Halloween, darling. You see anything? From MacGyver's Richard Dean Anderson and Valerie Bertinelli. No! The battle begins at home. Ordinary Heroes Sunday. Hello again. Final score in Penn Navy, 30 to 26. Penn, to our nearest knowledge here in the postgame operation, this is the first time an Ivy League team has beaten a Division 1A team since 1983 when Harvard beat Army. One other final score, Boston College rolling to a 41-7 win over Louisville. Troy Stratford, healthy for the first time all year, rushed for over 170 yards. Keith? Okay, Jim. Here, the line score in the ball game as we wait in the third quarter for Tennessee. That's Smokey, the blue tick hound, the official mascot of the Volunteers. Uh, Jeff Francis back to pass. That's it go big for Anthony Miller. He's got it! Boy, he is spectacular. He is caught and brought down by Britton Cooper, and Britton was all over it. And he still made the catch, and it's Tennessee first down at the Alabama 25. Jeff Francis is impressive. When he throws the ball, it's a tight spiral and a lot of velocity. But look at this. Miller again runs by the cornerback on that side, and it's just flat out speed. See, it looks like it's man coverage. And he doesn't try to be deceptive, doesn't try a hook, doesn't fake the outside move. It just, it's a fly pattern. He outruns it for 55 yards. Keith Davis in the backfield for Tennessee, and Keith Davis. He's belted down. <laughs> the chain gang got tangled up with some cables on the side. And they're still struggling trying to get the chains in place. And they run a play. We've been talking about the impressive Alabama statistics all day. Look at that from Miller. Four catches, 152 yards, and a touchdown. You can't get better than that. Second down, about 11 for the Volunteers. Miller and Davis in the backfield for Tennessee. Just swings it out to Davis, a couple of blocks to spring him. And he's close to his first down. He put in the edge with Derek Thomas. And they tumbled out right about the marker at the 15. Auburn winning by 21 today, and Arizona State out over USC in Washington. Jumping over Bowling Green, while UCLA leads comfortably at halftime today in Chapel Hill. They bring the chains all the way across the field. Looks like the ball is on the 15, and if it is, it should be a first down. No, not quite. <laughs> I think the chain guys, they missed one play. They were so late getting there. I'm not sure about the accuracy of that mark. And Smokey has a look at it and not pleased with what he saw. He looks bored. This noise. I guarantee you, you run a rabbit across the field, Lord. You see it. <laughs> <laughs> Third down at about a foot. Charles Wilson has the first down. As he gets inside the Alabama 14, where Cliff Thomas, defensive tackle out of Pearl, Mississippi, brought him down. Now you're in the four down area and things get interesting. They bring in Terrence Cleveland, a wide receiver freshman. He can fly. They bring uh, Miller back into the ball game. He's the guy that's having a big day. 154 yards receiving number seven. And those are your two, uh, two wide guys to the bottom of the screen. First down. Alabama 14. Bennett's after him. Just missed him in the pass. It deflected and almost intercepted by Van Fries Davis. Freshman linebacker from Phoenix City. The pass intended for Cleveland. And Francis is very lucky to get that one back. Well, I want to tell you something. If that ball is intercepted, they ought to put the interception in Cornelius Bennett's category. Because look at him. Here comes Bennett around the outside. Nobody's going to stop him. They try to push him outside. Again, it's not a sack, but it's a hurry. Forced him out of his rhythm. He threw into coverage, and the ball was almost picked off. He got a penalty flag on the play. On the play. Five yards. 10 yards, Tennessee holding. Holding offensive line. Lando Davis comes out. Keith Davis goes back in. No relation. Keith's from Nashville and Vando's from Wilmington, Delaware. 
Jim Miller is in. Ball on the 24. Jeff Francis drops to throw it. Goes underneath with it. And Miller was breaking down the middle on a post pattern, but he chose the short man because he was running out of time. Terrence Cleveland. Well, it gets you up close to the original line of scrimmage. They're still two yards, three yards back. But for Francis, that's 15 for 20 and 253 yards. Not bad. When you're down, 42-14. On second down, throwing again. Goes to Keith Davis, who's caught at the 12. and thrown down right about there. Chris Good got the first hit on him. to go inside the four for their first half. Yeah, that's exactly right. The down and distance doesn't make much difference here. They're in the four down area. They've got to go for the first down here. And then they've got to go on fourth down as well because a field goal won't help you a bit. They shut out Frank Scale so far today. He's wide to the top of the picture. He goes inside. Terrence Cleveland touchdown. Johnny Majors told us that he had a great recruiting late year last year, and we're seeing that today. Cleveland is another freshman. They just keep bringing him in, and the freshmen keep producing. Here's number four. See him slide under the coverage there? Everybody else went deep. The backs went with him. He slid underneath the coverage, caught the pass, and took it in. Rivers for the extra point. Alabama's offside. The kick is good. Todd Richardson, the quarterback, trying to get an early break on it in an effort to block it. Got caught at six minutes and 56 seconds to go in the third quarter. We've got a 42-21 ball game now, and they'll probably assess that five yards on the kickoff. Ten line, five yards, encroachment on the defense on the kickoff. The kick is good. So Cleveland, they got preoccupied up there in that corner though with uh, the clink scales. And he took away the defender that ordinarily might have picked up Terrence Cleveland. Well, that's exactly right. See, now you set the wide receivers down deep into the end zone like they're going for the touchdown, take all the defensive backs and safeties to the outside third of the field in the end zone, and then just slip that little freshman underneath, and everybody says, don't worry about him. He's a freshman. The next thing you know, he's in the end zone. Touchdown. Okay. into the end zone. There will be no return by Bobby Humphrey. The Denver Broncos and the New York Jets next Monday on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presentation. Jets are 5-1. The Broncos are undefeated. Johnny Elway cranking up those Broncos. Yeah, it's a big ball game for both teams and it uh, could be a very revealing game. There's the scoring and the scoring plays, and Terrence Cleveland, we told you he was a freshman, and I, and I said he was a freshman, but he's a redshirt freshman. And he had a great spring, and they say he's going to be the heir apparent to Tim McGee, who's now in the pros. Gene Jelks is the tailback. Bo Wright, the fullback. Jelks with the ball. And the 170 pounder just slashes his way up near the 25. Or Fred Bennett brings him down. Wes Neighbors is back in the lineup for Alabama. Just took him out and rode him enough so the ball carrier could get by the hole. Second down, six. Jumps again, holds on the right side. And he's got a first down for Alabama as Terry McDaniel, the left side quarterback, made the hit on him. The hole was there and he is so 
quick. He's almost at the 34-yard line. Now he leaves, uh, limping a little bit. A lot of guys getting his little nicks, bumps, and bruises, and you don't want that the week before the Penn State game. Humphrey back in there at tailback. And Bobby's out to the 43 before they ride him out. Not quite a first down, and again, it's Matt Daniel making the first hit on him. He's going to get an update on Jelks, but right now I'll tell you that, you know, he just came back off of an injury. He got hurt about three weeks ago, injured his ankle, came back, started practicing, and that Monday hurt it again. Did not play against uh, Notre Dame, did not play last week. And now he just limped off, and it could be that ankle again. He did get his first down at the 44. Bo Wright, fullback, falls down just as he was breaking into the open. A little bump and lost his footing. Harry McDaniel bumped him just enough, but Bo Wright almost had himself open side of the field. It's happened several times to Bo Wright today. He's got to pick those feet up a little more. Looks like those white lines are jumping up and tripping him. Watch him come through now. He makes a great cut here to the outside. Once he gets out there, there's nobody there. It's a foot race, but he stumbles and trips and falls. But he did get the first down at the Tennessee 41. Humphrey. And Bobby's inside the 35 to the 34, where Charles Davis finally stops it for Tennessee. 5-10 to play now in the third quarter, and Alabama leading 42-21. Tide led at halftime, 42-14, jumped out to a 21-0 lead before Tennessee got itself organized, and part of that 21, in fact, two of the touchdowns and the first 21 points result of Tennessee turnovers. Second down and three. Go right. Hit at the line of scrimmage, breaks the tackle, picks up the first down inside the 29 of Tennessee. Mike Adamley now. Keith and Tim, we're going to tease you a little bit here right now. You meet the nicest people at the college football scene. And the guy sitting behind me is one of the nicest, a class act all the way. Won't tell you who he is until the next play. His initials, however, are CD. See if you can guess. Charlie Daniels. <laughs> Charlie, you, you look great. <laughs> know him anywhere. First down. Humphrey picked up three, maybe four on that carry. And let's go back now as my visit with Charlie. Charlie, of course, the absolute master of that good old down-home country sound. And he's also a pretty big Tennessee volunteer fan. His son, Charlie Jr., goes to school here in Tennessee. And I guess it's not so bad. 42-21, the game's been pretty entertaining. Win, lose, or draw, they're my balls, and I love them, and I'll be here. What's next for you? Any concerts uh, coming up? On my way to Char Charleston, South Carolina, as soon as the game's over, to do a concert down there. No rest. No rest. No rest for the wicked. He looks pretty good, like a fox in a hen house here. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad life, Keith. <laughs> He's also in the horse business. He's uh, got quite a few horses. Runs a pretty good sized farm. Bo Wright carrying the ball for Alabama. And it'll be third down now for the Tide. The football resting. At the Tennessee 22. about a stable of talent. That's impressive. Third down and a long three, close to four. Shula gives it to Al Bell on the reverse. Bell breaks the tackle. And he knocks him out of bounds at the eight. He is really tough to get a handle on. There's Gene Jelks uh, sitting on the bench now, but 
It's an, I'm always surprised how tough Bell is to get a hold of. Watch him come through this traffic. Well, he's a preseason All-American, 6 feet, 170 pounds, tough body, soft hands, big play specialist. He averages almost 10 yards a catch. Matter of fact, uh, this Bears repeating last year, he came up with a touchdown and first down almost every time he touched the football. And he loves that reverse, runs it well. First down and goal, Alabama. They've got 21 first downs rushing the ball. Bobby Humphrey working his way to the one. And it'll be second down and goal. who Al Bell's boyhood hero was, Lynn Swan. Yes, I know that. Looks a little bit like him when he plays. Well, he's out of Los Angeles. Grew up. Swan was having his great career with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Barishnikov and Cleese. I'll tell you one thing. If you want to be a wide receiver, that's not a bad model. No, it's not. In any sense. Personal or player. Second down and goal. Humphrey over the top, touchdown. touchdown. Truly a gifted athlete. Sprinter speed, became the first freshman ever in Alabama to go over 100 yards rushing two consecutive games. Gained over 7,000 yards as a high school player. Says Marcus Allen is the pro he wants to be like. He too emulates him well. And check it. Good. With 2 10 to go in the third quarter now, it's 49 21 Alabama. And Alabama shows 400 yards on the ground. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. It's a Nissan hard body. It's got everything. It's his. It's got the big V6. Don't touch it. Never seen bigger tires. Don't kick them. Rides high. That sound truck. Yeah. For power and toughness in 4x4s, the name is Nissan. A year ago, when Iowa beat Michigan 12-10, Hayden Fry called Bo Beckler a crybaby for complaining about crowd noise in Iowa City. Well, there is crowd noise in Ann Arbor right now. After Michigan went ahead 17-10, Fry brought in his injured starting quarterback, Mark Vlasic. And Vlasic has hit Robert Smith with a touchdown pass to tie it at 17. Six minutes to go. Four of the last six games in the series have been decided by field goals. Keith? Yeah. A little tension in that one. Not a whole lot of tension in this one right now. And you can see that Bobby Humphrey has a career high in rushing yards today. 182. Gene Jelks has ice on an ankle. So he may be gone today. Here's a kickoff by Van Tiffin. He hooks it left and knocks it out of bounds. So that's the second time uh, that he has kicked that ball out of bounds. That's that left ankle. That's the same one, Tim. He has spent an awful lot of time in the Whirlpool, and he's, you know, he knows better than anybody. He can't help the club in the tub, and it's frustrating for him because he's a fine running back. See his numbers there, 14 carries, 89 yards. He's been strong and impressive ever since he's gotten to Alabama, and this year that ankle has really caused him some frustration. I think they would easily have had two backs over 100 yards in this ball game if Gene doesn't get hurt. I agree with you. Couldn't agree with you more. So they would have totaled somewhere in the neighborhood of 300, considering the numbers that Humphrey's hung up there right now. Here's the kickoff after the five-yard penalty. Waiting is Miller. Takes it at the seven. He's got a hole. He almost popped that thing. He is really fast. Got it back to the 39-yard line. And took a pretty good lick at that point. He's having a great day, isn't he? Yes, he is. 
Well, if you're a wide receiver, this uh, Tennessee is one of those schools where you know if you have that great speed that you're going to find a place and time to play. And young people come from around the country to play where they know they can with their particular tools. Keith Davis is the tailback now for the balls. 49-21, Alabama leading late in the third quarter. And Jeff Francis back to throw it. They gave him some open field, and he took it up to the 45. That's a pickup of six yards before Wayne Davis makes the tackle. That's a good decision on Francis' part. Now, in the first half, he had that, that same situation. Instead, tried to force a pass into coverage instead of running the ball himself, and it was incomplete and almost intercepted. Now, the scattering report on Francis is strong arm, quick release, and he's accurate. But he needs to be more decisive, read quickly and react, and that time he did. This went by the East Carolina beating uh, Georgia Southern. That puts a crimp in Eric Russell's hopes for a rerun of a championship season for Georgia Southern in one double-A. Francis steps away from the pressure, gets his pass off, and it's caught at the 41 of Alabama by Joey Clinchdale. First catch of the day for Joey. And it's a fine catch, Keith. You watch this now. Again, Francis shows his strong arm and whips it out there off balance. But I want you to watch Clink Scales now. He drives the defensive back off, makes contact, and then stops and comes back for the football right here. But watch what he does when the ball's out of that. Keeps his feet in bounds. He only needs one. Kept two. Looked like old Raymond Berry making a catch on the sidelines. On first down, Francis throwing again. Going deep into the corner. And it is incomplete, and a penalty flag. Anthony Miller gets the flag. The Alabama man, Chris Good, had the ball in his sights for the interception, and Miller comes across and nailed him in the back. Great idea. He knew it was going to be intercepted, or at least thought it was, so he went to make contact. Let's see when he does, see if the ball's already there. Oh, that's close. Still a good decision. I wouldn't fault him. If I'm a coach, I'm going to say, hey, that's good reaction and a great idea. Here it is again. Now, it looks like it's going to be intercepted, so now he just wants to shake loose the defender from the football. He gave him a lick, didn't he? He did. That's a good play by the offense. I don't care if there is a penalty. That's a good play. I guarantee you the coaches will tell him that. Carries loss of a down with it. So the ball comes back to the 44 where it is second down. Second down at 25. Ball loose. And Francis pounces on it and keeps control. So he didn't get away from the snap that time. And it's third down. Story on Gene Jelks now from Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, it's just a mild sprain. I wanted to take a look at these shoes, if you can pan down for a second here. He's wearing a special pair of shoes that are, are designed to stabilize the ankles. They have metal stabilizers on the side. Uh, Gene has had a problem in the past with his ankles. It's a mild sprain, as I mentioned, and they probably won't play them up 49. They won't play Gene again this afternoon up 49-21. Jeff Francis on third down and 25. Penalty flag down, gets his pass away, and Cleveland makes a spectacular catch inside the 35 but let's see about the penalty i think that laundry back up on the field is going to bring that one back and cleveland is scissored and nailed by greg gilbert and uh, needs a little rest they're going to bring it back he must have been six feet in the air and he really took a pop Put his mouthpiece back in his mouth, though. And he took it back Illegal down. procedure on the offensive team had six men on the line of scrimmage. He just had the wind knocked out of him. He comes off. He's okay. He put that mouthpiece back in his in his mouth. He knew then that he was starting to breathe again. But watch him. He's up at the top of your screen, number four. Now, they're in a zone coverage. He gets right in the heart of that seam. See, here come four Alabama players now. He's just a little bitty guy. He's 5'9", 155 pounds. That's like a feather up there. Some of those linebackers get down low on his ankles and his feet and his legs, and he does a complete somersault. Third and 31 as time runs out in the third quarter, and uh, they stop the play. So we play three at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Alabama is in control, 49 to 21. 49-21 with a quarter to go. Balls have the ball, third down and 31 
from their own 37. Playing the number two team in the country. Jeff Francis ducks away from the pressure. Gets his pass off. Should have kept it. It is intercepted by Freddie Robinson. He overthrew the receiver, Clink Scales, who had three Alabama people around him. He had a lot of room to run. He could have run for about 15, 18 yards, but he tried to force it in, and it didn't work. Again, he had room to run, and he did. He throws at Clink Scales. Clink Scales says, hey, wait a minute. Three guys around. I already saw what happened to Cleveland. He got his lunch. I'm just going to let this one sail. Freddie Robinson's third interception of the season. And Alabama has the ball first down at their own 44. And Mike Shula's in there at quarterback pitching to Bobby Humphrey. And he takes it to the Tennessee side of midfield and picks up a first down at the ball 43. All you have to look at is the third little stat down. Rushing yards, 400 for Alabama. And that'll tell the tale. And I know Johnny Majors won't agree with me. Well, you this is one of the most exciting lopsided games I've seen in a long while. You can add 13 more yards to that, too. Off that run uh, by Humphrey just now. Humphrey again. He's over 200 as he picks up another first down at the Tennessee 27-yard line. Bobby Humphrey has passed 200 yards. 212 is total. The scary part is, Keith, it looks like he's just getting warmed up. He does, doesn't it? He's running just as strong now as he did at the beginning. So that's a new mark for an Alabama running back against Tennessee in the long series. Humphrey one more time. And a couple of yards on that carry. Well, Jelks has already got a sprained ankle, and I'm a little surprised Humphrey's still in the game. He's got his 200 yards or whatever, and I think Bobby may be called to the sidelines and sit down, son, and take a rest. Even as you speak. Well, last week he had 105 yards and two touchdowns. And Bobby Humphrey grew up wanting to play for Alabama. We saw his house two weeks ago across from Legion Field. He sold coats in the stand so he could watch the Tide play. Now he's living his dream. And David Castillo comes in at the tailback position. He is a sophomore from Franklin Air Force Base in Florida. They give the ball to Bo Wright on second down and eight, and Bo gets a yard or so. Halftime, USC and Arizona State even. Washington winning big over Bowling Green. You see Auburn continuing to win. And number six, Penn State, 42-3 over Syracuse today. And they'll be down in Tuscaloosa next Saturday against number two, Alabama. And we'll have it for you starting at 3 o'clock with college football today here on ABC. 3 o'clock Eastern time. Bobby Humphrey selling coach. You know, a couple more years like this, he'll be able to buy the coat concession. Yes, right. Third down and seven, and timeout called here. Humphrey needs only 22 yards for a Bama rushing back record, but I don't think Ray Perkins thinks that way, though he has come back in the game. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Only the world of aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste. And a less filling beer. Michelob Light. The best of both worlds. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. To those people who haven't yet said bye-bye basics, hello, Nissan Sentra, who haven't experienced the longer, wider, roomier Sentra haven't known the superior fit and finish of Sentra. To those people who bought basic when they could have bought a new 1987 Sentra, Nissan would like to say, relax, we've got one waiting for you. The quality and value is Sentra. The name is Nissan. The Denver Broncos. Quarterback John Elway has their offense going full steam ahead. But the New York Jets plan to derail the Bronco Express on ABC's Monday Night Football. 
Arizona State and Southern Cal are tied up at halftime. Remember, in the Pac-10, nine teams, or the Pac-10, I should say, nine teams have a win, nine teams have a loss. Arizona State with the tie to Washington State is the team everyone is chasing. Meanwhile, Baylor continues to lead Texas A&M. They have just gone to the fourth quarter, and it's 27-17. Keith? All right, Jim. Bobby Humphrey is back on the field. Nah, I'm a really, I'm really surprised at this. What with the Penn State game coming up next week, Jokes already hobbled with a sore ankle and a 49 to 21 lead. Humphrey goes down. Look out! Look out! He's now out as a receiver, but Shula goes the other way for Al Bell, and the ball is not loose, but a penalty flag is thrown against Andre Kramer, and I think Andre came across, and they're, they're going to read this a little bit as head hunting. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be interception. It's going to be uh, clotheslining, which is a dangerous play in football. They try to keep a tight tab on that so players don't get injured. Here it is. Take a look at it now. Here comes Andre Creamer, the defensive back number one. There's Bell goes up for the ball. Well, I don't know. The football was up there above his helmet, though. He's going for the football. Oh, that's no. no I've got, I've got to go with the defensive back there. That is picky. Andre Kramer, number two, number one there, made a good defensive play. Defensive interference, first foul. Wrong. Was not interference in any sense. He had to be personal foul. It couldn't possibly have been interference. It wasn't interference, and it shouldn't have been a personal foul. That, that's a good defensive play. Yeah, I agree with you, though, about Humphrey. David Castile's hardly played today. He's a good back. He should be in there. First down, Alabama at the Tennessee 10. Humphrey's got the ball. And he's down after about a yard on the carry. Well, with Jokes, uh, sore ankle, and Humphrey should get bunged up here. Then uh, David Castile will certainly get played next week. Unless David Castile's a little bit banged up. Well, I know. Me too. You know, he's, he's had to overcome some nagging injuries that hampered him throughout his career at Alabama. I don't know if he's banged up now, but... That's Mike Whitehead coming out, the middle guard for Tennessee. Second down, ball near the nine. Bo right in the middle. And they get low down finally near the six. Keith, we've talked an awful lot about knees and ankles today. We've seen guys hobble on and off the field because of that. But, well, I'm convinced. I'm not going to win any friends, especially from the salesman. I'm convinced you take these artificial turf out of here and you put in natural turf and you'll cut down greatly on the injuries to the legs. Chester Bragg's a fullback and Kerry Gould, another fullback for Alabama. Neither one of them are here, but we're not talking about the fullback position. We're talking about the tailback position. Third down. And touchdown, Humphrey. That's a little guy with power. Watch the collision. He takes Charles Davis into the end zone with him. Now watch this. All right, here's the explosion now. We know he's quick. We know he explodes. The acceleration through the linebackers now into the defensive secondary, and Charles Davis just kind of rides you back in there. And tipping out on the extra point drive. And it's good one more time. 11.41 to play in the game. 56-21 Alabama. With the Hayes modem, a sales manager can check inventories in manufacturing or track shipments through the mainframe across the country. A lawyer can get precedence to prepare a brief. A farmer can check commodity prices to determine when to sell. And an investor can get the information he needs from Dow Jones, Dun & Bradstreet, or even the government. The Hayes modem. It's like fitting a 10,000 book library in a 10-inch case. In L.A. where the tans run deep and the beaches run forever, there's a hot new truck. Goonies on trucks, they run tougher. Goonies on trucks, they work harder. With the biggest tires in the class, flip-down jump seats, and the big fuel-injected engine. Goonies on trucks, they look harder. Hard bodies, the official trucks of the L.A. County beaches. Goonies on trucks. The choice is hard body. The name is Nissan. 
Alabama has won or tied for the Southeastern Conference Championship 12 out of the last 21 seasons. Bobby Humphrey, 220 yards, 14 more, and he'll pass Bobby Marlowe's mark of 233, set back in 1951. Tiffin with eight extra points today. One more will tie the NCAA record of 125 straight by Uwe von Schaumann when he kicked at Oklahoma. Anthony Miller is the deep man for Tennessee now. As Van Tiffin kicks off, he's had the ball high all day. This one not as high, but it's rules long. It's off the field of play. Well, coming up, November 2nd, Beginning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday morning, the New York City Marathon, which annually draws some 20,000 runners. And Greta Weitz, the great Norwegian marathoner, will be back to defend her championship. And probably Lisa Martin, the Commonwealth champion, will be the primary uh, challenger for her. Rob DiCostello, I would think, would have to be one of those to be considered as far as the men are concerned. But right now, Jeff Francis. Swings the ball out. Pass is complete for Keith Davis. And uh, breaking through the blocking is Chris Good. And Chris makes the tackle right about the line of scrimmage. 56 points is the most points scored against a Tennessee volunteer team since 1893. So what's happening here is uh, a little insult in a wound that will probably surface next year. Second down and 10. Francis gets it away, caught by Davis. Davis is short of the first down. Again, good involved on the play for Alabama, stopping him short of the first down. Mike Adam Lee. Keith, Alabama is so good that sometimes opponents think that they have 22 men and not 11 men on the field. A certain case of double vision. But don't worry about your vision in this case because M Melanie and Melinda Camp are fraternal twins and great Bama fans, a member of the spirit concession, and you're up 56-21. It's not hard to engender a little spirit. This is great. Y'all, this season is just fantastic. We're ready to go to the Sugar Bowl. This is great. Okay, double your pleasure, double your fr fun. Melinda and Melanie just having some fun, huh? Go Tide. Go Tide. The Turtle Twins. Got a little tongue tied, didn't he? He was overwhelmed, mismatched yeah. there. Uh, <laughs> uh, that old Adam Lee. Got Ball is out on him. 31 now, where it is the first down for Tennessee. Francis throwing again. Pressure coming from the backside. Passes away to Anthony Miller, and they've got him at about the 36, 37 yard line. Derek Thomas. Derek Thomas, an interesting young man, is going to be a heck of a football player. But if you go back to the opening game of the season up at the Meadowlands in New York when they played Ohio State, it was Derek Thomas that was made two mistakes late in the game and gave Ohio State a chance to win that ball game, but they didn't. And Michigan, you see, has finally won. Just as time was running out, a field goal for Michigan, and they beat Iowa by three. The field goals have decided that one for many years. And up the middle, carrying the ball is Vando Davis, and he's got another volunteer first down. Talking about Derek Thomas, you, you mentioned the two mistakes that he made at the end of that ball game, but he had played a very fine football game to that point. He had. And I think they were mistakes of aggressiveness, which you can coach. He came back the very next week against Vanderbilt, intercepted a pass, and ran it in for a touchdown. 43 yard line, first down, Tennessee. Alabama now beginning to substitute quite a bit. Set up that wide receiver screen for oh. Anthony Miller, and that's a pretty good play by Chris Good right there. That's an outstanding play, Keith, and it's about the third one in a row he's made. This time he read the flanker screen. At first, I thought he read it quick enough where he was going to try to intercept it. If he does, it's a touchdown. But then he realized he wasn't quick enough, so he got up and took out the blocker and then reached out and took down the tackler, or the ball carrier, rather. 
Cornelius Bennett's out of the ball game now, and Philip Brown is in, a junior from Birmingham, playing at that linebacker position for the Tide. On second down and nine, Ooh. from behind, Jeff Francis is taken down by Philip Brown. They are loaded in every position. Big, strong, fast. It's very difficult to find a weakness in this Alabama football team. What did Frank used to say? A lot of guys who look like Tarzan play like Jane. They've got guys, they all play like Tarzan. Derek Rushton in there defensively. Darrell Whetstone is in defensively along the front for Alabama as Jeff Francis drops again, fakes it, rolls it out, drops it underneath to Charles Wilson, and down he goes up on the 47. That is short of the first down and brings up fourth down. You said salt in the wound that may surface next year. This could surface for the next several years. Johnny Majors really has a lot of good young talent, but it is young. Asman's punch today are 40 and 47. Knocks this one out of the air. Greg Richardson takes it. And they run him back inside the 15 and knock him down on the 14. And there is a penalty flag. flag back around the 15, 16 yard line, a 38 yard punt. So let's see about the call here. Could be clipping. Is half the distance on Alabama. We've got cakes up here, we've got MMs up here, chocolate. This is fun. Been on the offensive team during the run back, it'll be first and ten. David Smith is in at quarterback now. David Castile is in at tailback. And Carlos Robinson is in at fullback for Alabama. So I think the front liners are gone for the day. Most of them, anyway. Hill is out from the eight, close to the 13. And again, the offensive Tennessee defense is obviously very tired now. They've been out on the field an awful lot. They've taken a lot of abuse, and they're obviously tired. So a reserve offensive unit for Alabama is going to blow them off the line of scrimmage probably without a whole lot of trouble. That's pack of ice is on Gene Jones. Second down, about four and a half, as Castile has it again. And breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage, and he is close to a first down. David Castile's a fine running back, too. He had an outstanding game against Florida. Ten carries, picked up 78 yards and a touchdown against Florida. And they went down there to do it, too. So if you win in Gainesville, you've, uh, you've played these days with Galen Hall, though Galen's had a lot of people hurt. Won a ball game today up in the Northeast. And now Meadowlands to play Rutgers. And got a win. With Kerwin Bell laid up. It is first down from the 18-yard line. The time remaining is 5.35. Castillo getting some work, and he gets to the line of scrimmage that time, and that'll about do it. In a 56-21 Alabama lead. And we look ahead to next Saturday in Tuscaloosa. Live Denny Stadium, undefeated Penn State comes in. David Smith. Ray Perkins likes him. He thinks he's a good quarterback. Back this time, Carlos Robinson. Carlos is a junior from Enterprise, Alabama, 190 pounder. And he gets about three yards on that carry. You see, Humphrey with two sets.
17. Jelks is 89. Wright with 90. Four points. That's a lot. Third down and six. Castillo. Caught at the ankles as he made his cut, and he is short of the first down, and so Chris Moore will come into punt. Well, that sets up some kind of shootout for next week in Tuscaloosa. Penn State, Alabama, both undefeated, both with national title aspirations. And the history of that series, they've all been wars. It's the one where the sideline gets a little bit like a rubber band. Well, it was the end zone where there were skid marks that uh, one time it caused yeah. a little controversy, too. Yeah. Chris Moore shoots it out low and should be returned by Thomas Woods. Woods gets it back to midfield. That's a 41-yarder. And Tennessee will go to work there. Three minutes and 27 seconds. Left the play of the game in Knoxville. Announcing the Valvoline Four Guard I Love a Parade Sweepstakes. Win a trip for four to four of America's greatest parades. To enter, watch the next commercial and remember what the driver of the smoking car says. Then go to a participating store for details. Russell, what kind of motor oil are you using? Motor oil is motor oil. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. A four-cylinder engine works harder and needs the extra protection of specially formulated Valvoline Foreguard. Not much of a break this year. That's the economy. Oh, Russell! This water damage is going to run $750. What would have stopped it? Thompson's Water Seal protects wood, brick, and concrete with its special waterproofing formula. Thompson's Water Seal, a great defense against repair expense. A battle of the unbeaten. Alabama is second ranked in the nation. Paterno's Penn State squad is number five. Coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. Well, the Iowa-Michigan game is again decided for the second consecutive year on a field goal as time ran out, and this year the shoe, as it were, is on the other foot, as it was Mike Gillette's field goal which won it for the Wolverines earlier. Gillette had hit a 53-yarder for a school record. The winning field goal came from 35 yards out. The Wolves stay unbeaten, and Iowa has a Big Ten loss. Keep. And Michigan has a big, big win. Defeated very much in the hunt for the national championship. Miami, Alabama, Auburn. One of them figures to fall next week, however, in Tuscaloosa. All right, Moses Collins comes in for Tennessee at quarterback now. Tony Thompson is in at tailback, and Greg Emsler is in at fullback. Thompson and Emsler, true freshmen. Collins is a redshirt freshman. Collins back to throw it. Swings it out for Thompson. Little guy from Lake Wales, Florida, takes one tackler and gets the ball down to the 41 before they finally wrestle him down. Thompson rushed for 1,500 yards in high school. He's a jitterbug type runner. Fairly strong for his size. They wanted to redshirt him, but because of the injuries, they suited him up, and now he's in the ball game. Tennessee ever gets healthy, they're going to jump up and fight somebody someday when they don't expect it. Second down at about two. Hand off is to Emsler. He's a 6'3", 230-pounder from Chatham, New Jersey. And looks like he's going to have the first down for the Volunteers. So it's a seasoning time for the freshmen, and they are in there against Alabama reserves primarily. Not in the all together, but mostly. Moses Collins, they say, could have the most athletic ability of any of their quarterbacks, but they say he has to learn the offense. He's got to gain a better knowledge, more composure under fire. That's why it's good for him to play against a team like Alabama, even though it's out of control right now. Takes one man. He's quick. And he's out of bounds, down around the 32-yard line. Of 
Well, they've had some of those great quarterbacks here at Tennessee over the years, guys with nervous feet like Condridge Holloway. You think he got him pinned in, and bingo, he's gone. I saw Daryl Dickey earlier today, saw him at halftime, young man who guided Tennessee to its fortunes of a year ago and the great victory of the Sugar Bowl. Really an impressive performance he put on in the last half of last year for Tennessee. Son of Doug Dickey, the athletic director. Collins throws it to Cloud, and a penalty flag goes down, and you may have an interference called out here, as there were four Alabama people all over the intended receiver, Miller. He threw into coverage, but he threw well. And Miller had his hands on it. Miller, he threw the ball before Miller even made his cut. Be a 15-yard penalty. All right, here's Miller now. Nothing fancy about it. It's a post pattern. He goes down 15 yards, cuts it back into the post. Now he's running into his own coverage here. There's men around, and the ball was thrown before he made that cut into the post. And he still almost pulled it down. So the ball's got a first down inside the 20. Near the 17. But the issue was settled some time ago. We've got 2.01 to go in the ball game, and Alabama sitting on a 56-21 lead. To this, I don't know, but what Ray might not keep indoors next week, too. <laughs> That's a foul rough in the passer on the defense. It'll be 15 yards added on to the completed pass. First down. <laughs> Collins is young, but he's impressive. Five step drop. Looks off the receiver across the middle, and right away, he plants and goes to the secondary receiver. Now, Collins. Took a pretty good hit in the back there. That's where the flag went down. But he still hung in there, threw the ball, put it right on the numbers. This will be another bother for the Alabama coaches, too. They'll have a lot of talk about this, but that's 13 flags against Alabama today for 101 yards. Don't make those kind of mistakes against the Penn State. Thompson tried to cut it back into the middle, and he ran into Derek Rushton. 6'3", 240-pound tackle from Mobile. Now, but see, that's the thing about the, the Alabama players are going to be ecstatic about this. They score 56 points. They beat Tennessee. They're all fired up. They're happy. They're going to get in a meeting. The coaches are going to give them the devil. Yeah, they're going to heat them alive. They're making all the mistakes. <laughs> Announcing the Valvoline Four Guard, I Love a Parade Sweepstakes. Win a trip for four to four of America's greatest parades. To enter, watch the next commercial and remember what the driver of the smoking car says. Then go to a participating store for details. Big parade this year. It's the economy. Russell, what kind of motor oil are you using? Motor oil is motor oil. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. A four-cylinder engine works harder and needs the extra protection of specially formulated Valvoline Foreguard. Not much of a break this year. That's the economy. Oh, oh Russell! This water damage is going to run $750. What would have stopped it? Thompson's Water Seal protects wood, brick, and concrete with its special waterproofing formula. Thompson's Water Seal, a great defense against repair expense. campus of UT in Knoxville. It's been kind of a grim day for their football team, but in a way it's been a, quite exciting. There have been some big, big plays in the ball game. And thanks to Dave Burns for stats, Todd Barry for the spotting today. And once again, we've enjoyed coming back one more time to Knoxville. Nice city. Happy birthday to you too, one more time. <laughs> Thank you. Second down and about two. Tennessee's reserves trying to get it in the end zone against the Alabama reserves. Moses Collins, whips it in there, touchdown! 
caught by Terrence Cleveland. Second of the day. You would think that Tennessee just took the lead by looking at Moses Collins. He is an exciting young man. Threw that touchdown pass, and he was into the end zone almost before the ball got there. He looked him away from his uh, primary pretty well, too. He kept looking to the guy running the fade in the corner, and then just whipped the bullet into Cleveland. Yeah, you know the defensive coach is going to be grounding in Alabama with 28 points having been scored against him. But they came in here with nobody having scored uh, on them for six quarters, and they hadn't given up a point in the second half of the last three ball games. Tennessee burned them today for 28. A ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for things you never know. Go! That's why getting into the Rangers is tough, and the training is tough. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. And I'm not the only one. When you buy a Nissan 300ZX, you buy a legend. A tradition of many Z cars, each meticulously made to the tolerance of an expensive watch. You buy a racing heritage unmatched by any car in its class. But most of all, when you buy the awesome 300 ZX, you buy Nissan. The quality and performance is 300 ZX. The name is Nissan. Terrence, he's from Sweetwater, Tennessee. And he's had two touchdown catches today. Balls will kick off now with 123 to play in the ball game. And again, one more time, let me remind you, don't miss one of the premier games of the season next Saturday here on ABC as Alabama takes on Penn State. It'll probably be number two against number five. You've got to run it, son. Bobby Humphrey <laughs> stood there and, and took a good look where he was and uh, finally realized that he's standing out on the playing field and took off and brought it back. That time he needed a size 8 shoe to be in the end zone. <laughs> yeah. He wears a size 10, had to run. Bobby going back to sit down. He's done a day's work for the Tide. This is Collins' touchdown pass now. He's the youngster that... Johnny Majors has wanted to play for a couple of weeks and hadn't had the chance. First down, Alabama. As Smith is the quarterback. Castile is the tailback. David has it and brings it up to about the 22. That's a three-yard pickup for him. As Zuga, Jeff Bentley, Danny Cash, Charlie Abrams, Jeff Trumorkin. Greg Payne, all in the ball game for Alabama. Carlos Robinson, Clay Whitehurst. Quite a thrill for Clay Whitehurst from Nashville coming here and catching that 34-yard touchdown pass today for Alabama's second touchdown back in the first quarter. Second down and about seven for Alabama. Half a minute to go in the ball game. Fun to see the enthusiasm of youth, though. Even in a lopsided defeat, 56 to 28, a lot of the young Tennessee players that have done well and gotten in late were enthusiastic. I mean, Clint Moses Collins threw that touchdown pass to Cleveland, and he was in the end zone to congratulate Cleveland almost before the ball got there. They're going to let the clock run out. Ball game is over. Final score, Alabama 7-0 on the season, Tennessee 2-4 as the tide comes into Knoxville and breaks the tennis.